All right, so thanks a lot. Now, the defacing part, right? The first time I, I thought it was very strange. My, my first, um, what do you call this? My first uh, uh, visit to Germany, Potsdam. You, you buy a ticket, quite right, but you get on the train and no one is there to check if you have a ticket or not, right? There's an element of trust, but the, occasionally or randomly people, there'll be like someone to check and then if you are found wanting, then you pay this, you pay this hefty fine. But, but I thought it was interesting that some cultures still trust each other, right? You trust that if you leave, I've heard stories about Japan where people just leave their bikes, I cycle out their bikes unlocked and you will find it even one year later, no one will steal it. You know, I, I wonder how long it would take before we can get that stage. Now, I've always thought it has something to do with, uh, if you look at some of these cultures, <coughs> it's a lesson on cultures, I guess. Uh, Japan is not as diverse as Zambia, right? We have, uh, you know, Bembas, Chewas, and Ngonis, and whatever. So I don't know if that, that is um, a feature. Anyway, um, so we continue off with, uh, from where we left off with lecture number two, which is this Python thing. Um, <coughs> so just a few announcements here. Uh, and the first one is, uh, I, I apologize up front. I wanted to send an email, but I figured if we are meeting, I might as well just uh, include something in the slides because uh, none, of our, none of our speakers, none of our speakers uh, could make it today. So we don't have a talk today. It's perfect for us because I think we get to cover a lot of things, some of which, some of the content will probably be useful when, when, um, when this guy soft comes through to give his talk, right? And we shall emphasize that he, he, he sort of like talks a lot more about the data collection process that he went through as he was pulling information from different sources. It turns out, um, because he was working with telco data, so-called CDRs, the engineers in the room know about this, but what he did was he got his data from different sources. So uh, apparently, is, is that Airtel? He works for Airtel. So Airtel, I think we know this. You, you know, when you are registering, you fill out those names and you give them your NRC details, right? Little do you know that you're actually giving away data. So they've, they've built what they call a, a Noyo client, a KYC database, which is why they send you those messages, say happy birthday. And I wonder if people wonder, how does Airtel know? You know, don't know. They hacked into my account and that's why they know my, my, my birthday, no, right? So he merged um, the, the information from your Know Your Client database and um, information from, from CDRs, right? The CDR transactions. So the SMSs that people are sending and whatnot and he did some fancy clustering. I don't know what algorithm he used. It would be nice to ask him exactly which algorithm he used and how he evaluated or how he arrived to the perfect algorithm to use, right? Um, so, but we must, we must remember to ask him questions about the data. Um, if you want, I can give another talk, but boring, right? It's always talk here. Um, but a, a day or so before, he will send through details with regards to what he will talk about is an abstract and his biography so that, I think it's standard practice when a presenter or a speaker is coming through anyway. Um, and then I, we also emailed details to do, these are assessments now, we emailed details to do with, um, with the, the paper reading summaries, right? So the first paper is, uh, is, is going to be a paper by Mbogo and uh, Mvura, or is it Mgala? Um, I, I worked in the same lab, lab with Mgala, and, and I'm being a bad example here. Uh, I chose a paper from four years ago, but I deliberately chose it because it will help kind of exemplify some of the things we talk about here, specifically the issue to do with data collection. He pulled information from various sources, right? Which is why I chose it. But for the purposes of the person who is next in line, and I do hope there's a roster now, the two people that are next in line must make sure that uh, you choose a more recent paper, right? Doesn't make sense for us to choose a paper from 15 years ago. What are we going to learn from there? We want to read the state of the art, the things that people are, are talking about are, are busy spending time on, uh, let's say, last year, at the very least, maybe two years ago, but not five years or four years, no, right? Yeah, so this, we have a week to do this, but it's something that you can do in, if you go through that three-pass process, you notice that it's something that you can do in, at most, maybe two days, right? So we, we don't really need a week, but we just thought, hey, to be fair, we just rotate, you know, one week, one week, one week, and all that. Okay? Yeah.
Yes, it's a simple task. You read the paper. You, you downloaded the paper already. So you read the paper, um, <coughs> and then your task is just to summarize, share your thoughts about what the paper was all about. Not verbatim. You don't. It's a summary of what the paper is about in your own words, your own description of the paper. Some of the interesting things that you think are highlighted in the paper. Gaps, right? Those things were in us, Max. Gaps. What these two authors did wrong, right? What can be done better? Uh, some interesting things that we can do to build up on what they did, because that's what research is all about, right? Um, but the summary is just 250 pages, which is half a page limit, right? We don't want to overdo these things. So, so we don't have to manipulate your data set? Like no, no, it's just reading. For this one, it's just, you just go and read, uh, let me just pull it up. You just go in here. Um, and it's important to ask as we are starting some of these things, right? Uh, oh, finally, Mr. John joined us. Thanks. Uh, we. As we are getting started, maybe some things might not be clear, but hopefully by the time we're getting to assignment number three or reading number three, things will be slightly more clear, right? So what we are saying is uh, for the reading, right? It's this paper, right? Eight pages long. Um, so you just read this paper and then you summarize it. And now we're not asking you to summarize chapter one and chapter two in 10 pages using IEEE format, no. That's only in soft computing, right? But <laughs> now, I don't know if you people realize, I brought up deliberately, it was a joke also, I plugged it in there, but have you noticed some commonality in things like, please use IEEE format, right? We're trying to rub it in because by the time you're writing these large documents, um, you'll be assessed in part uh, based on what, uh, how your style is, your writing style, and whether they conform to the prescribed standards, right? So normally for technical courses like computer science and things like engineering related degrees, IEEE is the thing. But sometimes you find publication venues like this, where I got this paper from, this doesn't use IEEE, even though it also use, it uses the, uh, what do you call this, the square brackets with the number. If you go to the background work here, related work section, you see this, similar to, it's similar to what you find in an IEEE formatted paper, but the difference you find is the formatting of, of these things. There's a reason why, and I, I sat there and I was thinking, I wonder if people have realized that there's, there's something at least in common so far in, in how these things are being done. So maybe the activities and the, what is being prescribed as the norm, right? It's trying to get us used, which is a good thing actually. It's a good thing you're summarizing chapters by the time you're done this year, it'll be good. But I wanted to also, seeing as we are talking about this, the paper which we are going to discuss today, this is an IEEE format, right? Observe, if we go to, if you, if we go to the references list, uh, maybe we're talking about things people already know, by the way, no. If we go to the references list, right, and we just compare the pattern here, and I'll go to, a, uh, uh, I guess, a, an actual peer-reviewed paper like a Kandewa and thing here. Um, <coughs> actually, I'll go to Laura's publication, or Henry and this one. If you look at the authors, right, uh, maybe bad, uh, it's bad example as well still. It's almost the same actually. Uh, oh, there you go. Have you, already, have you already noticed the things like, if you look at reference number three, observe, after the name is the title, right? After the names of the authors, which you have initials, right? And the last name, they're comma delimited, right? Um, with a, with, a, if, with a, what do you call this? A full stop at the end and whatnot. But notice how the, the title is formatted, uh, which is uh, here. Ranking of influencing factors in predicting students' academic performance. Compare this with how this title is formatted, how these titles are formatted. Like uh, we used Henry Trotter's, and th the problem with this is there are, there are conference proceedings and there are also journal publications. And the way you format these things is different. But if you look at, I know this is a, this should be, okay, if you look at this, for instance, it's, it's in double quotes. None of the things in this uh, SEM formatted thing is, in, is quoted. None of the titles are quoted. And this ties into the discussion we had about Mendeley, right? I was just singing about Mendeley, not because I like the Mendeley song, but because you won't have to worry about these things. There are certain ruthless uh, examiners that will go down to every little detail, say, this comma was not supposed to be, not comma, but this was not supposed to be quoted because this doesn't conform to the, 
to the referencing style that is prescribed. Incidentally, right, uh, I apologize again, incidentally, but these are things worth discussing in my opinion, but we can stop if you want to. Incidentally, if we look at uh, what UNSA prescribes, DRGS, by UNSA I mean DRGS, and there's, I'm, I'm told there's a war here, right? Um, they, they need to, uh, CS and engineering regularly have to go to DRGS to explain to them that there are certain unique cases where like they have to use their own style, right? So not necessarily the style that is prescribed by UNSA. UNSA prescribes Harvard reference style. I don't know if people have heard about Harvard reference style. So, so they have this really, I, I don't know if people have read this 83 page document, um, but if you look under the reference, very important document by the way, uh, I was chatting to Robert who I'm glad I'll be working with, I, I was telling him, he hasn't read the document and he's in year number two. And I was like, but how, how is this possible, right? Which is why I thought maybe the same thing might happen to this class, so why not talk about it? In the event that your supervisors neglect or assume that you, you, you were taught about this by DRGS. But if we have a, have a. Yeah, so you notice that DRGS prescribed using, using the Harvard reference style and, and there's nothing like using the squares with the numbers, but not that it's important anyway. Um, so this, uh, this summary. This summary uses. Uh, supposed to be in a, in a specific format. If, but the, the format is specified. Actually, we said uh, we not. It's a short summary. We don't. If you want to reference, uh, I don't know if we did specify that you should use IEEE or ACM. Uh, but in case it's not mentioned, I'll take note of it as being something to a to do type thing. Uh, and if it, because it's not reference, uh, but for now, for the purposes of those of us in here, whether you use SEM or IEEE is fine. Those are both computer science-oriented kind of things. So we shall. Oh, Which way do we go? So, sorry? Which way do we go? When the time comes, you mean? Normally, your, your supervisor will tell you what to do. Usually, your supervisor in computer science will, will tell you to say, use IEEE. Uh, but converting in between the two is a simple process. I, I, I showcased Mendeley last time, right? It's a trivial process with Mendeley. It's, it's one click, and then everything changes. <laughs> Just one click, one button, and then boom. If you're using Mendel as a tutorial, Jabra, whatever you fancy the most, anyway. Um, I apologize here. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I hope the, the assignment thing is, is clear now. It's just a short summary. There are other specifications like, I can read here, I don't know if you can read, things like it should be. 250 words max, right, which is half a page. Incidentally, this conforms to what Monica will introduce us to, the abstract, how to formulate an abstract. Usually, an abstract would be limited to a maximum of 250 words, right? Um, and then we, we are saying you must name this in a certain way so that there's no confusion. So there's the naming convention and whatnot, and important things like you should use single line spacing because it helps us automatically figure out how many words you've used. So things like the, the font is serif, um, the use single single line spacing, and then your margin should be one inch, right? Which is two point five four centimeters. Is then that that will help you compute, like it gives you a rough. That's a quarter of a page. Two hundred and fifty words, I think, is a quarter of a page. So, um, or is it half a page? And then five hundred words is one page for single spacing. Okay, um, and then I thought I thought I'd mention this because I was worried that I only counted. Four people that had, uh, now I saw Ted did this today, thank you very much, but, but I was worried that people, I was thinking there, have people actually read the email, maybe not so, if maybe in case they haven't, we'll talk about it, but please make sure that you select your project. And I'm glad that people have already formed implicit packs where there are so far three people that are going to work on Facebook related projects. In the event that you are experiencing challenges collecting data from Facebook, you know that there are two other people that you can speak to. And in fact, you're encouraged to work together if you're working on something that is similar. Uh, if you have two people that are working on a, a YouTube-oriented 
problem, why not uh, find time, sit together one of these maybe weekends or days and then um, create scripts that you're going to use to harvest the data, right? Because it's not an easy fit. Um, there are certain challenges you're going to face when it comes to Facebook, for instance, to do with, um, uh, sorry? Okay. Yes, and, and I figured it out because some four years ago, um, I think when we had presidential elections or something, I was extracting data from TIZ, uh, the TIZ web page, right? Now I have scripts in JavaScript. So I'm running the scripts and of course certain things have changed, but I realized I spent almost an hour trying, because I wanted to use it as an example. Sorry, I can't. But it turns out it's the issue of tokens. So it would be nice if we solve that problem anyway. The, there are solutions online, that's the beauty of, like something like Graph API is used by a ton of people. And I'll talk a lot more about this just now. Okay, so please fill out this if you haven't already. Select a project. You, you might want to select something to do with uh, NETD or the union catalog because there's already one person who has selected to work on that problem, right? So if, 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 if you have one person who perhaps uh, will be able to figure out how to have this data using the YIPMH protocol, then you know that you can refer to him. Or better yet, you, you spend time and figure out how to do this easy process. So I thought I'll just talk a little bit about the data extraction part for these specific um, themes or platforms, right? YouTube and Facebook and whatnot. I'll start with um, the NETD portal, and, and this is related to the, the, also the union catalog because they use the same protocol, ideally. Um, extracting data from there is easy because uh, the, OI, the OAI, the protocol itself, the OIPMH protocol, only has six verbs, and the verb that you're going to use is just the least record verb. I think I spoke about this in my talk, right? <coughs> um, but one thing you want to pay particular attention to is this thing they call the resumption token. For efficiency reasons, what these platforms do, like if you look at the number of records in here, it's about 128,000, right? Now, it would be inefficient for them to expose all the 128,000 records for you to harvest. So what they do is they put them in batches. That's how the, the protocol is designed. But you can configure your data provider to specify uh, how big your batch size is going to be. It could be 100 if it's a small repository. In this case, I think the NETD portal uses batches of 1,000. So you'll be harvesting 1,000 records at a time, right? But the, the thing is what happens as you're harvesting, so the first page will have um, the last metadata element, because this is in, it's the last XML element, this is XML, right? The last element is going to be the resumption token. This gives you the token that you use to get the next batch of files. So the next batch of 1,000 files. Is that making some sense? Okay, in case the people me just... <coughs> we have time because there's no speaker today. But, uh, so if, if, I, if we said we wanted to go to the NETD um, website, for instance, I don't know if you can see. Um, I think this is all uppercase, I don't know if it matters. Oh, there we go. So, if I use the, the uh, and I forgot to specify the metadata prefix. So if I tell, if I tell this repository, or this data pro the data provider integrated this repository, say I'm interested in extracting records from here. The first thing I do is I use the least record verb, right, which is what I'm using here, in case people can't see. Yeah. So this is the verb I'm using, right? The least records verb. Don't worry, this is a, if you have problems with the protocol, you can tell me, it's not part of the assessment. That's not even part of, if you have challenges with any of these protocols that I've used before, like uh, if you, you are the one scraping data from Google Scholar, I've done this before, or if you're using this protocol, just let me know, you can pay me a visit, and then I can walk you through the process. It's, it's not part of the assessment. What we're interested in is the things we are focusing more on, the cleaning up of the data, um, coming up with these models and, and all these fancy things we're doing, right? So I'm, I'm using, uh, and it's taking time here because it's, a, I guess, a connection and it's also, um, it should come up shortly, I guess I should. Ah. But anyway, as, as this thing is, is loading here, something else I wanted to mention still on this is, you see, because this is, this is plain old XML. There's a pattern, right? There, incidentally, if you're going to use Python and encourage you to do that, there are libraries that you can use for parsing XML, right? I think there should be an XML tree uh, library, or whatever they call it these days. 
<clears throat> what those things will allow you to do is you can search the different elements. So for this particular problem, you can just uh, create a function that searches for this element, right? Label, say search for resumption token, and give me the, the, the element value that corresponds to this. And then you just append this resumption token to your URL, right? Because you're issuing uh, get requests to this data provider. And then it will give you the results of the next, um, hope it's come up now, let me just show you what I mean. Yeah, so this is what you see the first time, right? Now if you scroll down, these are 100 records, right? These are the things you will in, be interested in. So for instance, if the question you've chosen is to do with abstracts, if it's to do with those subjects, if it's to do with the title, you'll be interested in this. But you harvest everything, right? So this resumption token here, Programmatically, you'd have to get the value. Uh, now I'm doing it manually here. Uh, I'm doing it manually, but in an ideal case, you'd obviously not do it manually, right? So you, you automatically get it using your script or your fancy application, whatever you're going to use. And then you say, the metadata prefix simply specifies the, the format in which you want these records to be presented to you. Incidentally, you can use a format that's specific to ETDs. I think it's called ETDMS. I do believe it's integrated with any ETD portal. But that's besides the point. You can make the assumption that the description tags are abstracts and then the title you can see, the subjects you can see as well. But you notice that when you issue your next GET request, what you do is you do not, you do not include the metadata prefix. You just, you just use um, the verb, right? Display list records and the resumption token. Just say is equal to this. Um, so that this is the first batch of 1,000 records. The next batch, the next immediate batch of 1,000 records is going to be done like this. The following batch, the third batch, you will get by, by, um, I did, by, by taking the value of the resumption token for this, um, this batch of records, which is at the bottom, right? There's only one resumption token tag, which makes life a lot easier. So you can just search, do a brute force search to say I'm looking for resumption token tag. <coughs> um, I don't know what's happening here. We we'll give it a little more time, it's coming. But you know, when it comes, we shall look at it. I, I hope this is a bit clearer. Um, my, my, one of the references in the talk that I gave, the, the trial, talk that I gave has a reference to a paper that you can use to look at the different verbs that are there. Right? Um, you can read up on them if you're interested in this. All right, so when it comes to Facebook, uh, it's a good thing we have an expert here. Yes, sorry. Hi, yes. Um, okay. Project. Yes. Now, uh, I can specifically Okay. Now, I want to find out uh, the question. It says classification test coming from whether it is useful or not. Yes. Uh, so, is it useful to, pe to a person who's going to read a comment associated with the post? You know, so. F so. A comment. Yes. I should be far from it. Yeah, but uh, once we discuss classification, you notice that it's a trivial thing, actually. Right? So let's say um, the Saka Times posts something. You know, there are those characters that will post something that's irrelevant, right? They have nothing better to do in life. Well, maybe they're having fun there. We don't know. But the post is about maybe Nkanduluo says uh, lecturers should resign if they want to, right? And then someone just says, uh, uh, I'm just coming from lunch. How is that comment? And I'm, it's a wild example, I know, but you know what I'm talking about. Yes. So your, your task is. All of those, those comments, can you build a, a model, a classification model that is going to tell us to say, this comment is useful to the post or not? Yeah. But, but we're leaving it, we're leaving it, we deliberately left, we didn't give you specifics of the question because we're leaving it open. We want you to come up with um, interesting thoughts and ideas. In fact, one of the things um, that's part of the assessment is what we're calling the problem formulation, right? So we cover out the problem, of course it's a classification problem, but cover out an interesting problem related to what we've asked, um, and then you can come up with fancy things to do. Yeah. Yes? Yes, uh, 
so meaning to say, if we if we try to analyze the post. Yes. So meaning we should not we should, should just stick to one post and analyze. No, so when you're building a model, right, if you build a model that's going to be analyzing comments, you are saying it doesn't matter if the post is from Osaka Times. The model should be built in such a way that, and in fact, if you want to, it's a small project, you can just say you are restricting yourself to post by parliament, perhaps, or post by Zambian watchdog, but make sure it's a, a popular page, right? But what we're saying is, so if we get a random post from Zambian watchdog, for instance, and your model is based on the Zambian watchdog post. It doesn't matter which comment we pick, it should be able to tell us to say this is relevant to the post. Right? Um, and you notice once we start discussing these things to do with feature selection that you'd have to be really smart in the way that you are, you are, you are, you are choosing these features, right? Um, and of course, once we discuss evaluation, you notice as well that when you're evaluating your model, you tell us things like this model is 80% accurate. Meaning that if we feed it a post, there's an eight out of 10 chance that it's going to give us the right answer. So we're not saying every time we feed it a comment, then it should tell us the truth, right? Okay. Oh, sorry, now they'll say he's sexist because he's, he's only picking, uh, he shows first. Uh, how, uh, yeah, yes. Yes. Sorry? Yes, so I don't know if you had a chance to read through this thing here. Is, is it? Uh... Aha, this thing here. We have, um, we have these questions, one, two, three, four, five, but we have sub-questions. So you choose one A if it hasn't been picked, or one B if it hasn't been picked, or two B. But you only be able to choose once you read through the question. You perhaps choose it because you're interested in Facebook or YouTube, maybe you spend a lot of time on YouTube like I do, or maybe you work in an academic environment and you want to understand how these repositories work, right? It's, or maybe you're just interested in this. So choose, but you can only choose one question. Yes. Yes. Well, it's a, it's a data mining technique. So what we're saying is this is a classification problem, but what you're going to classify is posts from popular Zambian Facebook pages. So you let's say you choose Lusaka Times, for instance. It, we're assuming, let's say, assuming Lusaka Times doesn't just post, maybe it does post news items, but maybe it's different types of news items. You can choose to say you want to classify these posts based on the t let's say, um, what type of news item is it? There are different types of news items. <laughs> it's fine, it's just... <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, please, uh, it's nice if someone else has understood. Uh, Then people are going to comment on that different things. So the task is, if that's the assignment to take, um, go through those posts on that page form, see if the comment relates to the subject matter, to what was what, 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 that trying to uh, And by the way, so what he's describing is, uh, is for B. No, you're going, to, you're going to build a model, so you would have to use a tech. Okay, sorry. Now, that's part of the problem, that's part of the question. Yeah, but by the time we cover classification, which is, is it going to be lecture series after the next one, I think, you, you'd already know, you don't have to do any research. We'll discuss it in class. It's May 20th. We have, what, seven weeks, eight weeks? seven, maybe seven or six weeks. It's plenty of time. For now, the, th the thing that you want to spend time on between now up to when we discuss classification is this data collection and cleaning thing, right? Extraction. The data extraction, collection, and, and, yeah, and cleaning up thing. Because you want 
And you might think, uh, maybe if you've worked with, if you have done this already, yeah, perhaps it's trivial, and if you do this at work, maybe it's, it's a trivial task, right? Especially if you've worked uh, with Facebook data before. But you notice that you come across problems that will take a lot of time. So you want to make sure that you start working on this right away. You might think uh, data collection is easy, it's going to take a day, it might not. I assure you, it might, you need to do a bit of reading up like what he was describing just now. And I hope he's one of those who's chosen Facebook because perhaps he already knows the solution. You don't? Yeah, just the Anyway. Yeah. So, if, if people still have trouble with figuring out this, uh, the token problem, you can pass through the HTML, right? Uh, in one of the slides, I talk about beautiful soup. What, what you use is a Python package. What you use that for is you use it to scrape for HTML. Now, if you look at Facebook, if you analyze the DOM, right? The HTML DOM here, you notice that they're consistent. You know where to find the comment. You know where to find the post tag. So you can easily extract those things. You're just the comment yes, sorry? You're just the comment no, are you sure? Uh, anyway, it's a, but it's part of the problem. <laughs> surprise, surprise, we'll figure out uh, <laughs> how to do that. Okay, uh, <laughs> we can dedicate a weekend if people have time and let's do a boot camp and this would be fun, I guess, and try and see if we can solve the problem together. Yeah, but. It, it is actually. That's when the problem started. In case people don't know the history behind this. So I can, using Graph API, yeah. I can do. I've got permission on my page, page. The page app, my account, I can do an app. But if I have to, for example, find statistics or, for example, a watchdog, yeah. Yeah, it means, okay, for you to, to scrap, yeah. you are using an API. No, for scrapping, you're just scrapping from HTML, the HTML itself. Okay. Uh, so there will be no API. And in fact, that's the way Google Scholar works. Google Scholar has deliberately not come up with an API. So what people do is they scrape the, the HTML. Yes, okay. So what Facebook does is like, the HTML, yeah. you just have uh, comment ID, you oh. uh, post ID, page ID. It would be interesting if we could find a solution to that problem then. What <laughs> you do Facebook stop that ID to take it to the beach? So another, another thing to do, because we've leave, left the thing of post open-ended, I run a page which has like, almost 3,000 people, we can use that. Doesn't matter which page, right? One of our students came up with, uh, one of our first year students last year, millennials here, they came up with uh, a page, Unza TV, we can use that. We can probably find a page for this department and we just ask them to give us permission to do that. So this, the data collection thing will not be a problem if we, if we come to a conclusion that it is not possible to extract from, let's say, Zambian Washington. For Zambian Washington, okay, you create some sort of Right. You have to submit to Facebook. Yes, this is right. Right. In fact, um, so this is what I was showing. I, when I when I was working with the TIZ thing, this is uh, I created some simple application actually, um, and I used it to get permission. Right. But now apparently there's an added layer where you have to submit a request and then they'll have to review your application, which I guess presents bottlenecks. So, but I'm sure people. Also, the beauty with what we are doing is there are a ton of people that have worked on this problem. So. I would be surprised if we cannot find a solution to this. And already, uh, and a solution that already is, is already available, right? Out there, it's just going to Google, Stack Overflow and Core, I guess. I don't know where people get these answers from. All right, so process for Graph API here, you can read up. I just thought I would talk about what I, what I did. I was extracting data from, this was four years ago, and I was revisiting my code from four years ago, and so much has changed, right? And I haven't consistently used JavaScript for a very long time. I wasted, I think I spent almost two hours, right? Because I wanted to make this thing work so that I showcase it in class, but I'm sorry, it didn't. It just didn't work, so. I don't know if, of what value this would be, but I can share the code for this. This is JavaScript in case people want to get ideas, but I don't think so. But I can share this, I can make this public so that people have access to this if you want. Um, it's, it's short, uh, show you co the code here. It's, it's, it's nothing complex, really. You notice that um, all, I do, all I have here is uh, a whole bunch of functions that I was using to extract the things like the, the page ID, because you need the page ID using the account, the canonical name like Zambian Watchdog, and then you use that to extract the ID because you need the ID, right? So functions to fetch the token that he was talking about. Um, 
and then a function that I was using to, to, format, to properly format the JSON response because the response you get, unlike OIPMH, the response that you get from Facebook is, I think there are alternative formats, but JSON happens to be one of those popular formats. You can easily manipulate it and it structures, the beauty with this is it appropriately structures your output. So if you are analyzing comments, maybe one of the things you're going to have to analyze are what? Replies to that comment. With JSON, those are like, really they're formatted nicely in a hierarchical structure, so you can easily pull those, those things that you might be interested in. Um, yeah, so the, the function for extracting the actual post, um, and then finally the, the function I was using to, to actually, I don't know what I was using for the TIZ page, this was four years ago, I don't know. Um, but I was interested in uh, parliamentary results, so I was getting the results that we were posting and whatnot. I, I think I had nothing to, better to do that day, I was alone at night and I'm like, let me just do <laughs> Yeah, I will share, I will share this. <laughs> yeah. Different inclinations, right? Different. Some people like to go and dance, which is good, but. All right, um, Zenon, I don't know if he's still there. Now, for Facebook, alas, I have not worked with uh, the Facebook data API, but I quickly visited the, the page and you notice that if you're one of those working with comments, there's documentation available, right? I don't know if there's anyone who's worked with Facebook API. Yes? YouTube, YouTube sorry, you have? No, oh, YouTube, yeah. So, but there's documentation available, all you have to do is go here. In most of these instances, you'll be required to just create an account if you don't have an account, and that's it. Okay. Um, if you're interested in the Google Scholar thing, I've done this, it's possible, even though there's no API. Um, if you want, you can, you can build functions yourself that will use beautiful soup, but if, you're, if you think this is going to be time consuming, there are projects that you can find. Like I, I know I use scholar.py a lot, right? Um, there are a bunch of other projects on GitHub and Bitbucket. All you have to do is just search Google Scholar and you'd be surprised what will come up. Just to showcase what this thing does, I took the liberty to clone this thing. Um, we're spending time here because we want everyone to be on the same page by the time we're working on the mini project, uh, to be fair. Uh, so if I go in square.py here and I wanted to, to just search maybe Jackson Peary's um, results, I'll just say, I've cloned, I've, so I have cloned this, this repository, this is what I'm using. Incidentally, it's implemented in Python, right? So if, if you're going to create a workflow that uh, exclusively makes use of Python, this will make your life a lot easier, right? So you can integrate fancy things like matplotlib, pandas, right? Um, because ex extraction of this data is just one of many processes, right? You need to convert this data in a format that's um, going to be accepted by these functions, the machine learning algorithms that we're going to be working with in scikit-learn, right? So if you use one language, it will make your life a lot easier. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, apologize for that. Running out of power, I'm sorry for that. Ah, perfect. Um, right, so if, I, if we wanted to, this is a simple, it has a lot of flags that you can use or parameters, but if you wanted to pull Jackson, I've done this, this is easy actually. Um, I've, I've done this. Uh, oh, are we connected? Yeah, so see this? In fact, you can use different formats. It just spit out all the articles that Jackson has written, right? You notice that it has interesting things that you find useful if you pick the, the scholarly um, output web search engines problem. Um, and, and if you, if you run scholar.py without any flag, it will show you fancy things like, you can format these in CSV. Now this would be useful for you if, uh, like if you are the type of person who is good at, at Excel, yeah, or Google Sheets, you can just export all your results in, in a CSV format and then just import these in Excel. So that you don't go through the trouble of, oh no, how am I going to format these in pandas and whatnot, right? Um, it's separated using a pipe here, and the first line is your header, title, URL, year, number of citations. Um, I, I don't expect us to follow through with all of these. I'm just giving us pointers and ideas so that you, maybe you get to decide, so, you know what, I think maybe, maybe I might want to just go for this because it looks like it's something I can do, or it looks more interesting, right? Um, at your own time, maybe you can re-decide if it ever comes to that. 
Uh, sadly, I have not worked with Microsoft Academic Graph API. So this is Microsoft Academic, sorry, wrong here, wrong thing. But this is Microsoft Academic Search. It's similar to Google Scholar, but obviously it's owned by Microsoft. Right? The war of the titans here. But you, you access, there's a Microsoft Academic Graph API that you can use. I've not used this before, but there are people that have used this, so it's possible. Right? It's doable. <laughs> and unlike Google Scholar, which doesn't have an API, Microsoft Academic Search has an API. I don't know if that was kind of useful as a, um, I guess, a reintroduction as to what the different questions are all about here. But I would encourage us to work in really in groups like the Facebook people. You're, you've already implicitly formed a group of three people, for instance. Right? Um, if you notice that someone is doing a, a no IPMH related thing, you can do that. If you want, you can do this alone. It's doable. I did it alone myself. Um, so I don't know if there are any questions. Maybe we can proceed to where we left off, unless if people need clarification on the question. Uh, oh, I forgot about the, I don't know if I talked about this part here. Ah, huh. ah, this, I didn't. There, there are a few changes in the document, minor changes, like the part for the, the formats for the presentation. It, it was only amounting to 100%, so we've included another part to make it like 20-20, so 20-20% split, so that the four, the four marks allocated, the 20 marks are converted into 100%. Right, so, and then the page limit for the technical report is not six but four. You see what IEEE does is uses 10 point size font, right? So if we say six, it would be like it's, it's equivalent of the, <laughs> the 10 pages that you're doing in, in soft computing, right? <laughs> but uh, no, that's, uh, I'm laughing here because it's not an easy feat, right? It, it's forcing you, I know what he's trying to do, he's trying to get you into the habit of reading, which is a good thing. It will force you to go and read. Right, because you're not just going to skim through it and summarize. What are you going to summarize, right? I forgot about this. Uh, but the changes, you know, I'll re, I guess I'll resend these or put them on the web page. I don't know if there are any questions before we, pro we proceed to where we, we left off from. Uh, any concerns, comments? Yes? Yes. I'm trying to find out. You told me to about. It's fine. Where we talked about? YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Right. Yeah. You talked about YouTube. Say, um, when the person on the question is here, they are saying that they use ICT. Oh yes, it was part of. Um, it was part of the, because you you notice once we start, and I do hope we go through. We shall, I think. We start lecture series number three. There's a process that is ideally supposed to be followed, right? There are processes that people have devised that you follow, right? Um, so you, you, you will notice that as, as part of the, is it understanding data process or is it, uh, yeah, I think it's understanding data process. You get to identify what different data sources you're going to use to solve your problem. In most instances, in fact, if you work on a research project that is uh, data mining centric, you don't just go there and collect data from a place like Facebook, right? You will probably be fetching data from different sources. And as an example, through the workflow, I'll show you a scenario, a practical scenario, um, that I'll, we will probably go through as part of what we're working towards, right? Uh, and so, essentially, you know, what, what we are saying here is uh, we're wanting you to figure out how to source for that data, but it's a course that we teach, and he knows about it. So. We have the details that you'd need anyway. We'll provide you with the details if you choose that. You, the, course, the course syllabus that has the different topics, um, and the, the different, I guess, that has the different themes and the actual specific topics associated with the different themes, if you want, if you want to go down to that level of detail. Yeah. But I, I think most of the questions you're asking will make sense once we, we start going through this, which is today, right? Especially once we, yeah, once we go through this. Especially once we, we go through this and that. Okay. Yes. The no. lecture three. No. I don't think so. I will share them the moment we are done today, even if we don't touch this. The mini project has been shared, actually. 
Please fill out that form if you haven't already. The doodle poll. <laughs> if there are no questions, maybe we can proceed. Is that fine? Uh, any concerns, comments? Uh, the, that's, that size sounds, I don't know if it's, uh, now usually we are coming from work, I don't know if we are tired or maybe there's something that we should clarify. Sorry? Sorry? Oh, you're late. Uh, hey, uh, now I don't, uh, maybe I look fancy with this, more technical. I don't do this for fun. Can I direct you here? I do this for more, all my lectures, especially for the first years, because they're confused. They're coming here for the first time. So if you go to my YouTube channel, all the things that we've done are recorded. You can, now it's three hours, but you can watch them at two times speed or something, right? Um, so now people already know the recommender thing from YouTube that I watch a lot of uh, hip hop type thing. They killed Nipsey Hussle here, but hey. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see if I can show you. But if you go to my YouTube channel, I let me just show you just now. Um, so this this screencast here is being recorded right now, so you can revisit it and then. But if you have specific questions for what we've covered, you can always. Uh, is there anything that you'd want us to maybe revisit before we proceed? No. Any part that? Okay. All right. All right. So maybe we proceed to. So we, we got our hands dirty last time and we, we got started with Python. I thought now is the perfect time for us to get uh, right into the thick of things and just just briefly walk through these three um, packages that we're going to extensively make use of in the mini project especially. And as we are shocking, so showcasing some of the examples uh, in, the, in the lectures, right? Um, I wish I could use both Java and Python, but Unfortunately, just be Java, which is why we went through the trouble of going through Java. So hopefully we, we've now reached a stage where we, we, we have a better understanding of uh, Python, I guess, I don't know. Um, but, but you notice that most of the things that you use will just be, how, how do you use modules and functions? And for people that this, you can't run away from this when you're extract, extracting that data, right? You will not run. <laughs> run away from looping, because uh, I guess in a sense when you're using that resumption token, you're looping through those different batches somehow. You know? And you loop until there is no resumption token element tag. There's nothing in that value to be empty, which signals that you've reached the end and you should stop harvesting data. All right, so, so I thought we'd start with uh, this mat, not matplotlib, right? Um, because once we start discussing the, the, the data, understanding data part where you, some of the things you want to do is uh, just do a preliminary analysis to describe what the data is about. And the cheap trick that people use is um, you generate what things like scatter plots and histograms and whatnot so you have a better sense of how, like the different patterns that you expect from the data, right? Um, and you do those things by plotting, right? Which is why we are going through mat matplotlib. But not only that, once you do your evaluation, right? Uh, perhaps you, you're evaluating what? Efficiency and effectiveness. You draw those fancy graphs. You say, um, you know, how efficient is this algorithm that you're using in comparison to the others, right? You just don't say it's this much efficient. You normally you draw graphs, fancy graphs, right? So that people see. The people are able to better interpret what, what you've done, right? I don't know if people do fancy things like uh, confusion metrics. I don't think you, you can plot things with that thing. Um, so the way, because this is a library, before we can use it with Python, we must, first of all, install the library, right? And there are different ways of installing this um, matplotlib library. The easiest or recommended one is to use a pip, which is like, um, um, I guess, a, a module within Python that allows you to, to store or to install Python, Python modules and libraries, right? Uh, and I'm using pip3 here because I use Python 3. Right? Um, if you're using Linux, you can also install, you can also install this module by just using uh, an apt-get install command. So maybe we can, before, uh, perhaps as a first step, maybe we can just install pip3 
I think we have access to um, Postgrad APN. Let's, uh, let's install um, Matplotlib using pip. Um, so an easiest way to do this is just try and see if you can, if the command pip is recognized by your operating system. Just type in, if you're using Windows, I guess try, try start and then um, CMD or something and then just type in pip3 or pip, pip command or something. But if you're in Linux like myself, it's as easy as pip3 install. Now the issue we had with Ms. Mwanga last time is precisely why we had suggested that we start using um, the virtual machine, right? I wish I could help debug the Windows thing, but we'll do it together here and try and find out. I forgot about this, I could have Googled it up, how to. But has anyone managed to access the pip, pip command? Yes, ah, what operating system is it? Mac? What? Windows. Windows, oh, can you share with us how you, the Windows resident expert, how does it work? I just uh, typed in. Pip, yeah, in command box. Oh, so it works? Yeah, and the uh, options. Okay, so just type in pip install. space install and then you install matplotlib. Uh, are we, oh, yeah, but if it works on <laughs> Windows, right, then I know Mac is, no, it's a Unix-like operating system, so it should be. Are we, hey, I, I've been in situations, we are all in, uh, I want to say this up front, don't feel shy. I was attending, um, I was attending a, a summer school earlier this, this, this year, right? And so we had a, I've never really dug in deep into deep learning, right? So I was there learning and I didn't feel shy to ask something that I didn't understand, right? We're still learning. If you're having trouble with something, just tell us so that we are on the same page before we get to the, I hope it's not the same problem as last time, Ms. Mwanga. Oh, no. Yeah, the Windows. Is there a resident Windows expert who can help debug this problem here? She's been having, maybe he can. Sorry? When I tried to install last time, it Are we okay here? Yeah, and then just trying to create that. Okay. <clears throat> Nunde, you're an expert here. You okay? Uh, it is not. <laughs> <coughs> hmm. Let me just try to. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, so if if it's not uh, if you can't find it, it could be that uh, when you're running it on CMD, maybe it's. Now, can you search for? Can you try to search on Windows? What fancy tricks do you? Maybe you can't. It could be that it needs to. I I, I don't know if. Uh, did you configure any environment variables or something? No. no. Huh? Not to do with people. Okay. No. Ah. Let's see what these people are saying here. Stack overflow is the way to go, right? Can can we try and go in here, please? Can we try and do a, a change directory to on your command line? Now we are going for the 401 upvotes solution here, hoping that it works. But let's cd into c slash wherever you have your Python installed slash scripts, right? And then, That's what I'm thinking. yeah. I, you've managed here, yeah? remember? No. No? Maybe let's try and do a CD to uh, CD and then C, space C, uh, C and then full colon, uh, backslash, uh, back, uh, backslash, and forward slash. Yeah, and then P and then Y and then S. Oh, and you want to make sure that you have 2.7 two here. We must make a change. Please make sure, it might, things might work, but certain things might not work. We want to make sure that we're using Python 3, right? Yeah, but for now, let's try and see if this will work. Can we do another backslash? And then let's try, and then scripts. Enter. Can we try now pip? 
and then space, just peep and then enter. Yay! Yeah. So do a peep, install Matlib. So we know it works, we need to explicit. Now if you configure if Windows, I've forgotten, I used to do that a lot, you go to, my, is it my computer? I don't know if my computer is still there. You right click and then you say properties, and then you configure your environment variables so that every time you fire up your CMD, right? Um, DOS prompt, whatever they call it these days, you will not have to do what Mwemba just did where you explicitly change directory into this path, right? That way, every time you just open up thing, it just works. But, but for now, just change directory to here, right? Just do ch change, to do CD, oh, whoa. Do CD into here. Let me just put it on Kate so that people see it. Uh, change directory to here. To scripts, actually, not. So just just issue this command. Change directory. Once you you say start CMD, or start, and then you, t I don't know what, is it, do, you t do you say start, and search for CMD, right? You can search for CMD. It's like riding a bicycle, I still remember. You, <laughs> and then you just. I, I, I think depending on how you installed, normally, depending on how you installed it, maybe it's in program files, actually. So also just try, sorry? In the, okay, the, the normal way. Yeah. Okay, let me not say the normal way. It's uh, when you choose your, your account on your, on your machine, yes. then you have to activate the hidden files if you, because it goes in app data. If you oh. didn't specify where Is that how your Windows works now? I thought it was always installed in program files or something. And so, so for me, I yeah. didn't specify anything. It went ah, in app okay. data, then local, then programs. <laughs> but something else, I think, files. something else that might work, I don't know if this still works or this would work in Windows, is once you go, you say start, you search for Python, and then right click and say properties or something, it will show you exactly where that file is. That's the easiest way of finding out where it is, I think. Mm. Yes. Right. So, so no, no. So you run pip pip space install, <coughs> um, and then, and I keep forgetting these things. I think I should also, as part of the to do, uh, activate. I always forget to do this every time. So what we should do once we once we we do this once we on the on the once we change directory into this thing you type once you're here you type pip or pip three or pip and then install. Oh really? And then pip install. What what's what's uh? But we're at the front here, we're not behind. <laughs> no, no, that was a bad joke. <laughs> it was asking me to upgrade. upgrade. So what, what you do to upgrade PIP is you say, upgrading. I think, you, oh, you're upgrading, right? I think you do it, is it PIP? How do you upgrade PIP? I don't know, PIP, is it PIP? Upgrade. Python uh, space hyphen M. Ah, okay. Space PIP. Install space double hyphen upgrade. Upgrade, right, okay. But it will show you once you try well, to What to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are we, so we're going to take a little bit of time. I want to make sure, well, my, one of our goals, and I'm sorry for those of us that are way ahead here, maybe you can already start, as you are waiting for this boring thing to end, you can already try and read up on OIPMH. But one of our goals, for my goal at least, is to make sure that everybody has these three things installed because our expectation once we start um, the, part, the parts of, of this course where we showcase the code is, I'll be expecting us to run the things that we're describing here, not just sitting and watching me do things, right? It's always better that way.
So we want to make sure everyone has Matpot leave installed, pandas installed, and scikit learn installed before we leave this place. Python pandas. But we'll describe it again once we get to the stage. This is where it sits. Okay, so we, how do you normally copy the location you say in here, right? And then you copy this, right? And then click start, start. Yeah, uh -huh. and then just CD, no, first CD. So CD, space, and then paste. No, CD, CD, and then not in, space, and then paste, and then enter. Now you can say peep, space, install, space, matplotlib, M-A-T, plot, L-I-B. Yeah, and then enter. Yes. <clears throat> so do it again, but instead of peep, say peep three. Ah, sorry, my fault. Um, change CD again. C, change, CD, change directory, space, script, SC, SC. And, yeah, and then just scripts. Why is this not? Not, ah, yes. Scripts. Enter. I'm wondering why this thing doesn't have a. <coughs> Is there anywhere else where you have this thing installed? Is this where you have. Oh, it's program 3. Hmm. Now, <coughs> there's some people that. For those of us with Windows, what process did we go through to install PIP? Uh, yeah, but it appears she doesn't have a, she doesn't have a script directory. Meaning, that, I'm, I'm surprised. How do you search for things in? Yes. Can we, can we go into? How do you go to Windows? Yeah. Yeah. And then, okay, can you paste the thing here? You paste where? Just paste, enter. Let's try and. Is, is there any, anywhere else we can find this? Something tells me. That... Let's go back. Instead of roaming, you go in local. Ah, just okay, where you were. What do you do when you go in script? Oh, you, you are there. Oh, you are there, right? <laughs> okay, well, I'm coming just now. You type in uh, pip, pip space install space matplotlib mat mat plot plot lib lib one word yeah, and then enter. And then just press enter. So what it will do is it will it show collecting or something. Then it it's it means it's installing um, the library for you. <clears throat> You're connected to the internet, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. Um, and then once it's done, it should be able. To, once it's done. <clears throat> yeah. So. Uh, oh, so it, it was located elsewhere. Where was? Okay. So you, you I wonder if we can. Has, has anybody, everybody installed? No problem. It's saying. Um, it's saying not to specify at least one parameter. Where? Where is it? Missing out something here. Install. Oh, so pip3 three three install three. space matplotlib. Oh. So you have to specify the library that you're installing. Yes, so pip. Oh, you're, you're already here. Where are you? Can you change directory back to scripts? Where were you? Enter. Mm -hmm. I've forgotten how, how do you paste in Windows? Control. Yeah? Control, control V. Yes. Okay. This is where we need to go. Now we can type in pip space install. Not the three because there's. Oh, there's a three? Then use the three. So pip three. Yeah, so pip three. It's fine, it will still work. Yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know what version of Python you have. Three. It's three? Yeah. We can all, you can always redo the three thing, it will work, yeah. Okay. And then space again, and then matplotlib. Uh, the Windows problem, have we managed? Can you maybe try to create another account? I don't know, we're shooting in the dark here. Or log in, you log in using a different account? Maybe you can help us, Master David, here, thanks. <coughs> yes, it should be a space, matplotlib. Okay, and then enter. Okay, so once you enter, it, 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 will, it will show you some, some visualization show, indicating that it's installing the library. And the way you confirm that the library is installed really is simple, you go to the interpreter itself, the interactive interpreter, and you just type in uh, import matplotlib, right? It's a way of checking to see if you can do that. This is what came up. The script. Hmm. So uh -huh. let's let's copy this uh -huh. up to here. So the Python space, so everything in quotes here. Copy it and then paste it in the script. So that we upload the way. It's better you highlight this and then okay. right click and copy. From everything in quotes, so from Python, the way Python, up to pip, the end of pip, yeah. And then, <coughs> then just, then just, Paste that. We want to. Up, I think it wants us to upgrade. Uh, paste it there. It wants us to. I paste or just like. Uh, uh, just right click and then yeah, that, and then enter. It probably wants you to install the pip utility. Maybe it's not up to date. Uh, Maybe it doesn't. Not the latest version. He has Python 2.7 actually. Oh yeah. yeah. At at some stage you want to to it's install okay. three. Yeah, oh. probably want to. So once this updates, uh -huh. you want to rerun the the installer for matplotlib and see if it works. But at the same time, you also want to install version three because there are certain things that perhaps might not work. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, are we okay here? Or oh, yeah? Okay. Okay. So maybe we can assume that we've. Can't you spare one of the laptops so that she plays along at least before? Now, I, I normally come with two, but I came with one today, I don't know. Or maybe, maybe I should ask if there's access to these things. It, it's, not, uh, it's not healthy to, it is healthy, but it's, it won't work well if you're not really doing the, the thing with the rest of the class. Um, it's working? If, if it is, then maybe just for today, and then uh, hopefully we can fix the issue. All right, so you're fine, yeah? Yeah, I think the reason why we had to change the, the whole path is yeah. we didn't put it to the environmental variables. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you have to configure the environmental true. variables. Yeah. It's a trivial path. Now, the, the testing of the thing is quite easy, really. If you've installed matplotlib, you open up the Python interpreter, right? Uh, so the, the same way we did it last time, just Python like that, like so. And then you just type in import once you once you finish the installation of matplotlib. You say import matplotlib, right? And then press enter. If, if there are no errors, then you know it's been installed. In fact, you can go a step further and just hopefully say help matplotlib, right? Because you've imported it. And then if it shows you this, like it spits out like uh, some manual related information, some help do document of sorts, then you know that matplotlib is installed, right? So all you do is, once you're in, in the interactive in interpreter, right? You say import matplotlib, like so. Yeah, uh, but if it tells you to upgrade it, you must. So once, once you're in the interactive Python interpreter, do matplotlib like so. If it works, then we are good to go, and then I, I guess we can proceed. This is a trivial process. Yeah, and just to, to see if uh, yeah. normally when you, you've installed, yeah. You just say hello. Um, Mat, matplot, import matplotlib. 
What about when they check in the help? Oh, so the help you just you check by just uh, typing help, open parenthesis. There's a help built-in function, and then you say matplotlib, and then close parenthesis. Uh, incidentally, the there's a help function that takes in a parameter, probably I don't know if this is a string or a module name, and then it returns formatted documentation like so. So it's telling you fancy things like uh, this is a, an object-oriented plotting library. Um, if you're interested in, and this is incidentally, these are things you can you can see in the in the actual documentation, HTML formatted documentation. But usually when you're programming, I think you know this, right? You'd much rather do everything within the, here, right? It's much faster than, oh, let me open my browser and let me read and search the help thing. Yeah, I don't know. This I find this useful myself, right? All right, so maybe we can do a few simple things now. So when it comes to plotting, right, similar to what we see in things like Excel, um, and if you use R for plotting and all these, I don't know what fancy things people use these days, but there are plenty of tools that people use for plotting, right? Um, I guess we know what uh, a typical plot, the, the components uh, associated with a typical plot, right, has a title, you have uh, your x-axis labels, right? Um, you have uh, the actual uh, visualization that you're pl plotting this plot area here, right? Um, and optionally, a legend. If, if your plot requires a legend, like if it was a pie chart, for instance, we we'll probably need a legend somewhere here to show people what the different colors represent, right? So typically, when you're working with matplotlib, the creation of your plot as a coit, now I've always thought there's a difference between a plot, a graph, and a chart, right? Apparently there's a difference. I, I use the word plot here because it's a plot. I don't know what the difference is. Plot, a chart, and a graph, I don't know. Is it, it's a graph, no. Um, so it's a three, four step process. You import matplotlib library, the library itself, um, and then you draw the plot, and then you specify parameters that are going to help you change the aesthetics of the plot, right? Um, so do you, this is really interesting. Do you want to use a particular style for you to generate your plot, right? If people have used R, you know that there's a, an R package called ggplot, which I use religiously. It makes your plots look really nice. Um, these graphs that I have in this document, ladies and gentlemen, look the way they are because I used, I used ggplot2. These are, these are created in R, but they look the way they, they do because I use uh, ggplot2. So if you like the way ggplot2 looks, then you can, um, you can use the style, that particular style, so that the plots that you're generating using um, matplotlib look something like this, right? You can change so many different things here. Now, I wonder, this, this person here, this is probably Excel, right? Look at this. Ugly. Ah. <laughs> but I, I swear it's Excel. It looks like Excel, right? Um, we should be obsessing about, why, well, is it world hunger instead of talking about how beautiful the, the plot should look like. This is wrong. Okay, and then you render the plot, right? And you notice that in all these different steps that we're going to follow, all we are doing is we are evoking functions within this library, modules and functions in this library, right? Simple process. So typically, the first thing you start with when you are, you are, you are working with matplotlib is you specify, this is, for, for the very basic things that you're going to be doing, any type of plot, you, you'll be safe by just using this PyPlot library, really. Right, so you import from matplotlib mat, mat library, you are specifying that you're interested in this particular module, right, PyPlot. Um, and surprise, surprise, you remember what I said last time about using aliases, right? I'm, I'm saying I'll be referring to what I've imported as POT. This is a convention, in fact, when you're going through tutorials, I've deliberately done these slides in such a way that um, they, at least in most cases, they're conforming to the things that you find online when you're reading up. So you find people uh, use uh, the alias uh, PD for pandas, right? PLT for uh, the PyPlot module in the matplotlib library. We are, imp we are importing the PyPlot module in the matplot library. Everything that we're going to be using, uh, doing here on will be using functions within the matplotlib.pyplot module. 
And the way we're going to be referring to them is by using this what Elias. Now, I'll start with a very simple, I don't know if I have a, a simple example here. Oh, I said I'll do a simple example here. So I'll start with a very simple example to showcase exactly how this works, right? So um, you can play along if you want to. The help? Just uh, control C or, or Q. Quit, Q. Uh, so, so I'll just uh, save this here. Uh, just slides and then this is two. Okay, so matplotlib examples. So I'm just creating examples. So I'm just creating, and I'll just say example one here. I'm just creating a file that I'm going to be working with instead of using the terminal like I was doing last time, the interactive interpreter. It's a lot easier because we're going to be writing a couple of things here. So I said the first thing we do when we're doing this is um, we say import what? Mat, matplotlib dot pyplot, right? As uh, MLT, right? Is it? It doesn't matter though, but pyplot, PLT. Right? And then we're saying we're going through this, this, this three step process here where we, we import this and then we draw the plot. Now I'll show you just a simple example of uh, how we draw the plot. We just use PLT, show you how easy it is. We just say PLT dot plot. And then I will, I wonder if this will work. I will just plot, I'll just plot, uh, I'll just plot, uh, um, I guess this is like um, a straight line, right? And what, what the plot function does, just draws a, st a straight line using, this, this will be your x axis values, right? The other variable gives you your y axis values, right? So I'm just plotting, the values I'm using are from just simple list, right? And I'm just scaling it just to showcase, I'm just multiplying this by 10 really. Uh, it's going to be a straight line that cuts across your, um, it's probably some y intercept or something. Um, and then once I do this, I will say plt dot show, right? And then boom, that's it. That's all you need to do. Just to plot a simple one. I just observe what happens to see if this will work. So I'll go back here. And because I've created that as a script and not running these things as a series of of commands using the interactive interpreter. I'm changing things here so that people get used to this. I'll just, I'll just go to where I've, um, I've, I've, I have created that file, which is a long directory here. Slides. Hmm. Okay, it's lecture two. Right, so I know that this is a, uh, Okay, I'll, re I'll, re I'll, I'll repeat everything. Um, so I'll just call Python 3 and then just say matplot example the clip and then boom, right? This is what we wanted. Simple graph created for us, right? Straight line that goes at, uh, I think, I guess 0, 0, because I'm just multiplying the x-axis values by, by 10, really. But, but the takeaway point here is not the height. Oh, no, oh, when I said I was multiplying, I was just saying implicitly. So you notice a couple of different things here. Number one, maybe this is confusing. I'm using my x-axis values, are, I'm saying it's a list, right? So I'm saying the, the x, x1, x0, y0 is going to be the first value, which is 1, 10. This will be, I'm plotting, I'm, I'm, I'm plotting the first point is 1, 10. The second point is 2, 20. The third point is... 3,30. Yeah, when I said multiplication, I'm sorry. But, but it turns out you can actually even say one, can we plot one comma, comma 100? What would this do? What do we think this would do? Hmm? One comma, sorry, yeah, it's just one. It's one data point, right? So if I run this again, it's going to just come and, and show me, oh, where is it? I don't know. I don't know why this is coming up. Anyway, um, but the bottom line here is that um, now that you know what you're feeding this plot, um, plot thing here, you, you notice that, sorry? I'm a little bit uh, lost on uh, where you, you said uh, we create a folder. 
instead of running from the... Oh, I was saying, I don't know if people noticed. You know, last, last week, right, I was doing this. I was coming to the prompt. Mm -hmm. This is counterproductive. You only do this for testing. Yeah. I was coming here. The things I was doing is I said import matplotlib.pyplot, right? Mm -hmm. As plt, right? And then I say plt dot plot, right? And I'm wondering why, yeah, and you can even autocomplete, right? In case you, you, are doing, you are doing this for the first time and you don't want to make a mistake. And, and in fact, instead of doing this, I'll just say x is going to be equal to this list of, uh, of, of values, right? And then my y values are going to be um, 10, 5, 40, right? Let's change things. And then I'll just say plt dot plot, right? And then I'll just say I'm plotting x, y. And then once I do this, you notice that it creates an object, right? It, sometimes you could be processing a lot of data, so what it does is it does things for you in the background, right? Um, and then you now explicitly do uh, plt dot show. So you notice all of these things we are calling are functions, right? Plot function, show function, right? And then it creates your thing for you like that, like so. Now you notice here, I don't know if people saw what I was doing. Before you save, right, you can save in different formats. This is really useful. If you, you are going to get into typesetting with LaTeX, you can save it as PGF, right? Um, if you want a higher resolution file, you can use an SVG format, right? But before you do this, you will notice that you can actually change you can configure these, these things associated with the plot, right? So if you want to, to have more space at the bottom, you just, you, you just move this thing here, the control panel here, that you access by, by creating this um, configure subplot item here, which is second last button at the status thing here, yeah? yeah. So you click this and then you can, you can really just ch change different interesting things and if you want to make it beautiful, right, I guess, I don't know. But, but the, the other interesting thing is all of this can be done programmatically, dynamically, you don't have to do this. But, but if, if you're using, if you're graphing for the first time, just it's, it's not going to be like a like routine task or you're not going to be generating complex graphs, you might as well just use this and then you export them. So IE or EG, when you, you, you are generating your graphs, if you're going to use matplotlib for your mini project, you can use just matplotlib and then once you're done with your configuration, if this is your result of, um, what do you call this? Your, um, the results of your um, uh, evaluation exercise, right? You do this and then you export it and then you will then paste this somehow, integrate it in your document that you write the technical report, right? Easy. My question is about the, the shell, we're not using the shell, but but the, the script, the, the, yes. Yeah, the script, yeah. Okay, so when you use the script, right, which you, you will be using, by the way, yeah. no one will be using the, 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 the shell because you have to save these scripts at some stage, right? You create them, I advised us to use either Wing 101, I recommend it because I've used it before, but I know some people already have PyCharm installed, they feel comfortable, is it ID or something? I-D-L-E or something, right? Yeah. Um, I think Kaumba has that, yeah. So whatever IDE you want to use, it's fine, right? But the bottom line is, as you are creating complex scripts now, now going forward, especially once you start this mini project thing, you, you have to create these files, right, where you'll be writing the coding. Now the way you run those files is, you have to change directory to where you've saved the files and then you run them as scripts, which is what I was doing here. You run them as scripts, so this is a directory where I created my file into. I change directory into, into, into that location, and then the way I run the, the script is I, I, I call the interpreter, Python 3 interpreter in my case, and then the file name, right? Effectively, it's supposed to be a module because modules in Python are essentially file names. And then you just press enter. So you can just, just maybe try as an exercise as well, just try it out and see if, if you manage to create a file with this code, right, and then just run it as a script. Is that fine? Now, sorry? <laughs> How to change it into a script now? How to? 
script. So the easiest way to do is you see this code here. Yeah. Open Notepad. Yeah. 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 But you should not use, no one uses Notepad because you'll be doing complex things like indentations, right? You don't use Notepad, you want an intelligent IDE that will do things automatically for you. But open Notepad and then type in these things and then save that file with whatever name you want but with a dot .py for convention, I guess. And then the way you run it is uh, you go on the command line and then, now I don't know how Windows works, right? Can you right click and just say open with or run with something, right? No, I mean like, uh, can you, if, if uh, so I'm here for instance. If we're in Windows, can we do this? Lecture slide number two. Can we say right click and then open with uh, other, I'll say Python 3 in my case. I wonder if this works. Paul, can you do this in Windows? So if you can do this in Windows, don't do what light, don't make life complicated like Lighton where he's saying change directory and all that. You can just right click your file. If it works in Windows, I mean if it works in Linux, it should work in Windows. You, dot, dot .py for Python, it's for convention. You can just right click and then just say open with and then say Python. But it's always nice to use the command line. I like it myself. Yeah, it makes me look important, right? But <laughs> or feel nice about myself. Now, uh, as, as people are continuing the scripts, right? And it's a trivial thing, really. You'll notice that, that um, look at this, right? If I, what, if, what if I wanted, usually when you're running benchmarks, right, evaluations, you won't have one line. You will have maybe two lines, right? What if we have another line that has the same x-axis x uh, data points, but maybe the values are slightly different, right? This is 40. It consumes a lot of resources. This is 50, and this is 100, right? Observe. If I, if I cancel this, uh, and I guess I can't cancel it, I'll have to come somewhere here. I don't know where it is. Oh, it's, you run it. The way you run it is try and right click it, to, and then open with, or you can go to your CMD and change directory to where you have saved your file and then run Python space, Python 3 space, the name of the file. I'll come and help you just now. But observe, observe what happens when I do what I just did, right? Yeah, this, uh, I mean, these are common things that we're doing. I'm just showing us how easy it is in Matplotlib. I'm just creating, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just evoking a different set of, I'm, I'm, I'm creating, I'm, I'm evoking a function with a different set of values, the plot function. Sure at the end, yeah? Sorry? Yeah, then show. The show is, you call the show function so that you render the, part, the plot itself. Because interestingly enough, you can actually wrap that, the resulting thing in PyPlot. I don't know what it returns. It should return a value, I think. It's an object. Let's try and, let's try and see here. You know, complicating things. But you can, you can assign a value here, I guess, in case you want to do something fancy. Maybe you don't want to write show just here. I don't know in what instances you would use this. Ah, if you, if you are going to be fancy and you use Jupyter and say, I'll share my Jupyter notebook with you so that you can run through the code and won't use Jupyter, but it's in the course syllabus. You can create um, objects that you later run, right? So you can do this in, in Jupyter? So the Jupyter notebook is meant to, oh, you're using Jupyter, right? Yeah. It, it's nice to, yeah. you can submit the Jupyter yeah. notebook, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but it's nice to do this. Anyway, um, I thought I'd, I'd mention this thing, right? I thought this was nice to mention. But, but we don't want to waste so much time on doing trivial things. Um, as the last thing, for this, the plotting thing, as the last, um, I guess, thing I want to highlight. Uh, I don't know if people remember about this. Uh, the thing to do with named, um, named parameters, named, is it named parameters, you remember this? I said there are certain functions that have named parameters and you, depending on what you're doing, you can explicitly state what you want to do with those named parameters, right? So I do believe by default, this, this plot function does not, does not show you, and I wonder, uh, I guess, red, I guess, I don't know. Mm. I wonder if this will work, I don't know. 
not working. I guess we might, I don't know if this will work. I'm just trying things in the air here. I mean, just trying out things. Yeah, so you notice what I've done here. I'm just, I'm, I'm showcasing, so the, the label thing there is a named parameter, obviously, and I guess the default is just blank, there's nothing, right? So I've just created a simple agent. And, and, and you notice really as you are poking around this, uh, this PyPlot module, right, that there are a lot of interesting functions. So what you want to do is if you want to find out more about, um, about uh, a particular module, all you do is, in this case, you say matplot, matplotlib, right, dot pyplot as plt. So if you want to find out more about what exactly is this plt about, right, you just do that. Or you go to the online help functions and it will show you the different kind of functions that you have here, a lot of them actually, right? Um, a lot of them. I've not used some of these things here. Is this making sense? We can at least plot a simple line and two lines maybe, right? And be able to run a Python uh, thing as, as a script here. The, the reason I brought up the, the plt.legend is to showcase the fact that there are other functions in this module, right? Like for instance, if you wanted to, this is a, this is a terrible plot here. It has no access labels, right? There are functions. As an exercise, maybe you can poke around the different functions that you can use to include every, every plot must have a, a title, or an optionally subtitle. It must have an access labels, right? Y axis, X axis. These are all functions that you can evolve. I, have we managed, everybody has managed to at least plot this simple plot. Now maybe as an exercise, I was thinking, um, I'm looking at the time here, right? It says 19.06 here. I was hoping we could get through to pandas as well and finish off my plot clip. But if you want, we can do this. But maybe an exercise would be nice here. These are things that I kind of touched on. There you go, you can plot a histogram if you want to. These are all simple functions, really. Look at this. Uh, I've already imported my plot tree, but I'll just say plt.hist, right? And then I'll just feed it, um, and my histogram will have one, two, three, four, right? And then I'll just say plt.show, and then it will come up with a nice, terrible histogram here, but you get the point, right? You have, uh, so any type of, there are different types of plots, right? Bar plots, so there's plt.bar. You have pie charts, plt.py, I suppose, right? All fancy charts that you can think of right there. Um, but, but, but the takeaway point is that whatever plot you're drawing, you're, you're rendering, you go through these four different steps, right? You import the library, right? And the way that you import the library and the specific mode you're interested in, you will mostly be using the pyplot module. Import uh, matplotlib.pyplot as plt or as p or whatever. And then you draw the plot. Optionally, before you draw the plot, you specify the values that you are going to be plotting as variables, right? And then you draw the plot, and then you start specifying aesthetic details associated with your plot. So your axis labels, your title, your legends, and all those fancy things. And then you render it using plt.show, right? Um, the more you do this, the better it will become, right? So labels and rendering and whatnot. Um, x-axis labels, this is how you do it. Uh, now, I thought as an exercise to help reinforce what we've done, I don't know if people would instead want us to go to pandas, but maybe I thought uh, it would be nice for us to play around with a real data set. I don't know if people know what JCTR does, the JSUIT Center for Theoretical Reflection. They compile what they call a bread basket. This is really interesting stuff, right? So you can get a sense of how expensive life is in the different parts of, of the country. And in our case, maybe we are fortunate here. I don't think you care so much about how much beans cost, but it gives you an idea of, um, of, of how much money people are spending on average, right? Uh, I guess I can pull out the thing to show us, but there's a link here. I, I was thinking we could use this as an example, a practical example to just plot a line showing the trends for Lusaka um, between November and April so that we see like, um, how life has been expensive, right? Uh, so this is a simple line graph, but we'll extract the data and then see how we can plot it. And then we also want to draw a bar plot that will show us 
the costs in the different uh, cities or major towns that JCTR actually does these surveys, I've always thought they can do a much better job than, than doing, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an actual survey where you ask people to do, it's a questionnaire, I guess. But we can crowdsource this information. For people that go in shop, right, just this app, enter how much you bought bread at and whatnot, right? You can automate this stuff. But we'll draw a bar chart to see which is the most expensive town, right, in Zambia. And then we'll draw, draw a pie chart so that, I guess this is best done if we look at the actual data. Um, JCTR, BRB, this is it. So this is how they format their documents. This is done religiously every month, by the way. Um, I've been interested in this, and I've collected data from as far back as 2000, and I guess it's 2001 or something. But because it's in PDF, um, I guess the challenge was like kind of, it's always um, programmatically putting this information because they're not consistent with their formatting, right? But so our pie chart will be on the basic commodities, right? We want to draw a pie chart showing how much money goes to mini meal for this average family beef and whatnot. But this is really interesting information which I encourage you to kind of look up if you have nothing better to do, maybe at lunch and you have packed lunch or something. But we are interested in drawing a pie chart for this, not the cost of essential non-food items, but just food items, right? So we'll just extract this data and then, and then just plot this. Is this fine? If you want, maybe for the sake of time, maybe I can, because I think I already have this in Excel, so maybe I can pull out the, because I, I thought it would be nice for us to just do this ourselves. Although when we're extracting data, we'll be automatically doing this, but I'll just share the spreadsheet with these details, and then you can just um, get the information from the spreadsheet and then try and see if we can plot that, just to consolidate what we've discussed. And then I'll be going around if you have a question, uh, I can, we, can, we can highlight, we can help each other out on how to do this, is that fine? So for now, even though this thing says uh, the link is, it's, it's telling us that the link is, um, is here, um, is here, what I will do is, uh, let me just share, let me just share this, uh, where is Lusaka here? There we go. <clears throat> let me just confirm, I'll share this document here. So we plot a pie chart for, for commodity against total cost. And I've not discussed some of these things, so I'm hoping, my, the goal is you look up the manual to see how you use the labels for a pie chart, right? Labels and the values. But the line is going to be simple because we're just, uh, we're just interested in graphing what? This is for Lusaka, for instance. November was the, uh, the B, BNB was 5,000, oh, uh, is this correct? Yeah, okay, yeah. We had already rebased in, in 2016, right? Yes. So this is correct, okay. Hmm. Does this make sense? An average family of three spending, let me see. Do you think this makes sense? This is interesting stuff, right? I'm, I'm interested really seriously in asking you people, do you think this makes sense in Oh, these are different provinces. What we're interested in are these values here for Lusaka. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, these are... Is this true? Per month, do you think people can spend 5,000 for... <coughs> that has become expensive. Okay. Yeah, but this is 2018, by the way. It's gone up, obvious, for 2019. Inflation and whatnot. Okay. So, so it will be interesting. So, what we want to do is for us to plot year, right? Because this is the month and year, right? We'll plot month and year against the total value, right? From 26 from November 2016 to to uh, April 2018. We just want to see that nice trend here. So what I'll do is I've confirmed this. I'll, sh I'll save this as uh, this for, <clears throat> I guess for consistency sake. And then I shall, thinking best way of sharing. Uh, uh, hopefully this is at least making some, some sense. Um, I hope.
JCTR, they do a lot of interesting work, uh, thankless job, I guess, but the Catholic have a lot of money, I guess, I don't know. Um, I think the offices are somewhere across, the Jesuit offices are somewhere across Unza. Yeah. I normally go there myself. Yeah. I, I just want to move it to the web server so that it's a lot easier to, to move. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, you know this is just okay, and then now in case you're wondering, I do this almost on a weekly basis, which is why it's become muscle memory. And I think at work, our database administrator types the queries with her eyes closed here. I don't know. <laughs> the SQL queries, right? <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know. Sorry? With autocomplete, yeah. It's, um, I remember I'd reached a stage at work when I was with Airtel where, I, I, now I don't know, now looking back, I'm not sure if, uh, I was, I was even, maybe I was, what do you call that? I was being paid uh, for free, right? I'll go for work and I'll be done by nine hours, right? <laughs> I'd automated scripts, I swear, but, <laughs> but, but uh, and then work started becoming boring, you know, but. Okay, so what I've done is I've um, I've shared uh, I've shared uh, I've shared this BNB thing, so we can we can download it by going to <clears throat> we can download it by going to the resources directory. So list and then slash light on theory. I'll share this just now, and and then uh, okay, I'll sh I'll copy it just now. I want to go to. So we shall go here. We want to go here. If you have that uh, that document that I'd shared, ah, uh, doesn't matter. That has the QR code. You can just scan the QR code, but it's fine anyway. So it's 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 here, and then in handouts you shall find the the Excel file with the details, and then we can try and see if we can plot the pie chart and the line chart. If we take so much time, maybe we can give ourselves maybe 10, 15 minutes. If we don't, it's fine, we can do it as homework. Then we can progress to pandas maybe. I, I was hoping we could, maybe we can make sure we do this, I don't know. I was hoping we could. And then I'll start going around if people are having trouble so that we help each other out, right? For those of us that have um, challenges. You've just shared it now? The, so, yeah, so if you go in this link, you'll find it. Yeah, in handouts, under handouts. What is it called? It's called, um, it's called BNB. It starts with BNB, but it's called, uh, let me just come here. It's called uh, BNB under by Lusaka under by April under by 2018.xls. So it's this file here. Under yes, it's under resources. Ah, sorry, under handouts. handouts. Yeah. So CSC 57 foot 1 slash handouts. Here. So let's see if we can do these simple line charts and pie charts. I can help with... BNB. BNB, yes. You found it? So you, you, you want to just type in, the, there's no thing. There's no handout there. So now, yes. now yes, so now the task is, we, it's like we are, we are collecting data, right? We just want to experiment with real life data. So the first question is, we plot um, the line chart showing the trend for Lusaka over the years, in fact, by month. Okay, so this, the data, data is, is somewhere, here. guess. Uh, no? Uh, yeah, it should be this. No, this is for the different okay. provinces, so probably up there. Wait a minute, go down slowly. Here. Okay. So for this data, this is housing, three bedroomed house and whatnot. Okay. Is there a way of importing this data there? Well, so <laughs> pandas now, I will show us. Pandas okay. is a wonderful tool. With pandas, you can read an Excel document 
you can read the CSV file. You can read HTML actually. It's, it's a really powerful tool. Which is why everybody's using it, right? No, but in this case, we can just copy, right? I mean, just format it somehow. Uh, uh, yeah, just copy and. There's a nifty way of doing this. Can I show you? Now, I like showing people things. Look at this. What you can do is because, um, to try and accelerate pace, the pace here, what we can do because we are, we are pressed with time, we can just say, if we want to deploy November to whatever, what we can do is we come here. And people, I know people have done this, and someone has already done this. Boom. You remember now, right? Because this is going to be what? What data structure are we going to use to do this? You can choose to do two things. You can use a hash table where you map, uh, and you have to figure out how to plot your hash table. But you map your, you have a key value pair where the month here will link to the cost, right? Or you can have two separate t lists, right? Um, where where the, the other list will be the, the, the month and the year, right? November 2016 would be a data point, and then the other month would be the, the cost, right? So why not just concatenate, right, these things, starting from here. In, in fact, not even concatenate, because these are a lot. Why not, I like using this, why not text join, right? Text join and then um, text join this by a comma. I'm just gonna copy everything from here. Right, and then enter. Something is wrong. I think I forgot the value here, which is true. No, I don't want that. Hmm? Text chain is there on Office. You're saying it's not there? No, me. I forgot to install Office. <laughs> yep. So you do that, right? That way you don't have to copy paste because. What we want to do at some stage is do what? Do something like this. Is that, is that not what we want? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so what I'm saying is the chip tricks, instead of copy pasting, we can do this yeah, and just do that, right? Copy it down. But I don't know if these numbers they probably have to be the commas, I'm not sure. Maybe we have to remove the commas somehow. Like this five comma thing. Hmm? But there's, I guess there should be a way of doing this. Uh, we'll leave it as an exercise. Uh, what can we do here? Find and replace? Sorry? No, the function text. Oh, sorry, sorry, I, I'm sorry. So text join, the way it works is text join, text join. Can you see? You can. Text join, text in. Oh, the text in, let me just zoom in here so that people see. I'll zoom in again so that people see. And then, so text join. Now, I am sorry, I don't know if Excel has text join. I'm assuming, I'm using LibreOffice Calc here. But it should have. No, then it should be join text. Join text. Yeah, can you check the function? No, I would be surprised if it doesn't have this, right? If it, well, if it doesn't, then we can just copy paste this to Google Sheets because I know for a fact that Google Sheets has text join. But Excel should have this, I would be surprised. So. No. Can you check? Uh, this is when I'm installing Office. Oh. <laughs> but you, can, you don't have to install. Why don't you just go to Google Sheets? It has. Google it has, right? Yes. These are standard functions, actually. So, Excel text Yes. Google Sheets. What, what is it called? Text join. Text join. Not join, text join. So, text join, according to LibreOffice, Calc has three parameters. Three parameters. The first one is the delimiter. So how, what character I want to use to separate the different values. The second uh, parameter is, is um, a, a Boolean value that's going to indicate whether you want to skip, uh, is it skip empty cells? Usually you work with contiguous cells, right? So if you find a cell that has no value, what do you want to do? You skip it, true. You don't want to skip it, false, right? In this case, we want to skip it, anyway, but there are no empty cells. So just say true or false, it doesn't matter. And then the next, is, a, is either a block of cells, a range of cells, or comma separated list of values. So it's just, you just highlight the block of cells, and then it will give you that comma separated list that we want to use. And then you can just put square brackets and just say, uh, oh, this is going to be my list. I'll create a list for my X values, which will consist of label. From November 2016 to, from November 2016 to April 2018, all those values.
Hmm? Oh, so yeah, so this is thing here. This is this is this is a result here. Now there are a couple of other interesting things to note here, right? If, if we wanted to, I wonder if we've already tried it out here. I'll, I'll, sorry, I'll go back here briefly to see if um, to see if this will work here. Oh, sorry, I wanted to check the labels. I'm sorry. I can come and help you with text join if you want. Oh, text join is okay. Let me do this. In fact, because we are working with the same range of cells, find an empty cell, and then what you will do is you will type in this formula in the cell and say enter. Is that fine? Find an empty cell, preferably uh, this, the cell that's uh, two, two, two slots after the end of this data point that we're using in the spreadsheet, and then just type in this Excel function. Or this formula, sorry, not Excel function. Sorry, the, the reason why, if you want me to slow down, uh, okay, slow down, but the reason why I want us to accelerate is because this is actually, by way, the way thing, we're not here to do this, right? But of, maybe we are, I guess, because we are. But I'm just thinking, I'm trying to, to make sure that we rush to the more, more important points, but if you want us to slow down, we can do this, and I guess if this would make sense. Now, I, I, I have, a, sorry, a shameless plug. If you haven't used Google Sheets before, I highly recommend you use it. It's very useful, the data, our database administrator here, very useful function called the query function. You cannot query in, well, you can query in Excel, but you'd have to create a data source, right? And then you start running your SQL commands. But with Google Sheets, there's a query command, very useful thing, I use it a lot. You can literally query a spreadsheet within the, I find it really useful instead of creating all these funny, especially these funny formulas, especially if I want to summarize my data, right? So you want to get into the habit of using uh, Google, sh Google Sheets, very nice. If there are people having any, like if you need help, I can, if you're struggling with some parts and. We're going to Google Sheets. Oh yeah, using Google Sheets. Excel format doesn't have those functions. Huh? Doesn't? Nope. But you can just go to, if we can go to, it has, I'm surprised. Is, isn't the Office package for Mac the same as the Office package for Windows? It's different. Oh, you, you have Mac as well? It's yeah. not there? I think uh, just go to Google Sheets. Yeah, Google Sheets is the best. <laughs> now, I work a lot with text and uh, I, I do a lot, I find myself sometimes, I, I, instead of programming using Python, for instance, I'll find it a lot easier to just create these crazy formulas in Excel, right? Because I work with a lot of text, especially when we are manipulate. I, 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 I mentioned that we are harvesting data for, to, to feed into this research report that we are collecting. So part of my task was to harvest data from Google Scholar, right? So scraping it, then now trying to make sense out of it. It's a lot easier for me to use a spreadsheet because I've told myself I invested a lot of time trying to <laughs> to learn how to use a spreadsheet, right? I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I always use spreadsheets whenever I have the opportunity, right? Um, but anyway. I, have people managed to draw the line? Anyone? We want to see the line, right? They just sit here, because that's what we're doing. We, have we managed to draw the, now there are tricks here. I hope people will be able to. The Boolean value is, uh, oh, is false yeah, yeah, so in Excel, just like in, in Python, zero is false, one is true, right? Yeah, which is why you have to zero there. But you can also put zero, it's fine, it will work, right? Okay. <coughs> now, I've, I've been finding it hard to, I found it hard last year and this year, we're teaching a computer architecture and uh, computer systems and computer architecture course and when we get to logic gates, right? Explaining the truth table and this concept of of Boolean values, my God! I also helped teach a, a, last year. I need you 1020 course. People thought um, it was hard to use Excel with formulas, and I sat there and I was thinking, but these are the things you should learn because uh, the people that will normally advertise data analysis type jobs will, will, will be glad that you're able to do some of these. Not for you, but I mean the first years, not you. You are way beyond that, right? <laughs> Okay. Just to take you back, uh, the, the first comma in uh, the 
it's a delimiter. It's, it's the one that you're going to use to, to concatenate the different values. Let's see if, uh, maybe it takes join here. Ah, uh, it's not there. We can find the equivalent here. Oops. Which one? Yeah, Google Sheets has, I know, because I've used this. Let's see text. <clears throat> okay, for those of us in Excel, instead of, if you don't want to use Google Sheets, I'll, now this is going to be very um, painful, but... Sorry? <laughs> the question is we it's we oh so that's a line graph showing the man huh? Yeah, so what we're trying to do is we want to draw a, a line graph that will show to say it will show us the trend mm -hmm. of the 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 BNB for Lusaka. So is it consistently rising? Not that we care anyway, but maybe we do. <laughs> but we just want to plot it, right? That's what we're interested in. So, so, we're yes. doing two text joints. One for the... Yeah, for the... For yeah, for those of us... Can we just use Google Sheets for that? That formula will work. Mm -hmm. If not, I'll, I'll try... Let me just create this concatenation until... Uh, <laughs> S. E, F, G... H H I So the maths and the which axis are they? J K J K Yes. The man and which axis looks at the way. <clears throat> this is the thing, right? If we were to draw a graph, I guess it's part of the question. How would you want the months to be? Where would, which, which axis would, would make sense to have the months in if you're drawing a graph? Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> um, so in the pi plot uh, function, the first set in the square bracket is the x, x values. Sorry? What is doing right? Yes. No, I thought that was uh, that was stupid again. I was going to share the concatenate function, but uh, it's silly because you'd have to. So I've used the concatenate function, but it's stupid really because if I was to share this, it's a it's a longer version, right? So it's let's just use. How do we handle the How do we handle the commas? The commas. As in, just manually remove them? No, this is the thing. I mean, you can just do a find and replace also. Have you managed to plot it? Yeah, the numbers, because they the... Can we, can we, can, you can just do a replace. Highlight everything and then just control F, and then they'll, you click the find and replace thing. I'll show us just now. And then you can just search for commas and remove the commas before you concatenate them. Is that making sense? So, so look at this. If in here, right? This is me. If I, if you were in Google Sheets and uh, you were here, I'll, so I'll just uh, place them here. Oh, oh, values, I guess. Paste special values, text numbers, and dates. So, so they are here, right? What what I'll do is I'll say uh, find and replace, right? Like so, and then I'll say search for commas, replace them with nothing at all, like so. Uh, but I should have selected everything, so we want this to happen, right? 
Is that not so? Let me just go back here and just paste. But you can do fancy things, right? In fact, I'll select everything and then just say, uh, find and replace all the commas, not just current selection, but I guess current selection. Replace all the commas with, uh, with is, this, is this fine? So before you do a text join, you want to, you want to do a find, find and replace in Google Sheets. This is the thing here. I wanted to show us something, right? Look at this. I, I thought you'd figure that out. Maybe someone has, right? So the list that we used before was what? It was, uh, those were int values throughout, right? What, what data type is, uh, is our month here going to be? Yes. And how do you, do, 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 yes, define a string in, in Thank you. I thought people would figure it, but look at this. So yeah. what we wanted to do was something like matplotlib.pyplot, right, as plt, and then we'll say uh, plt, okay, I'll say x is equal to, hopefully this works, it should, a, b, c, right? And then I'll say y is equal to uh, 10, 20, 30, right? And then I'll say plt dot plot, right? And then I'll say x comma y. And then I'll say plt dot show. This is what we wanted, is that not so? So like your, your, your months will be here, right? And then we just want to see a trend. We don't know, we don't know how it's going to be, but so November 2016 and whatnot. So, so the, the, those values you have, the Novembers and the what, they're supposed to be? Strings. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we're not here to do these tricks, but look at this. Um, I was going to say, instead of wasting time, say, how do we do those strings? The April, th we can create a formula, right? Now, the things I'm showing us here, is I guess the four under maybe things to do with like data transformation and whatnot. We shall see how Python easily does some of these things once we start looking at code examples, right? But I want us to look at uh, this and show us that we can actually create more formulas, right, in Excel. And in fact, if you're an Excel person or if you're an SQL person, instead of this, maybe, you, maybe you'd feel happy doing this in SQL. I don't know how you do this, but if it wasn't on a larger scale, you'd use that. It doesn't matter what sort of data analysis tool you use, as long as it helps you achieve the overall goal at a much faster rate, obviously. And if it's effective, then it's fine. So what if we did this, though? Concatenate uh, a single quote, because the double, or a double quote, a double quote and November, right? And then we'll concatenate with another double quote like so. Wrong. Let's, let's do double quote, and then concatenate single. And then in here, we'll say double quote, concatenate single. Is that fine? And then you extend your formula like so. So now, now you can, you can just use, use this now to do your concatenation. In fact, your concatenation, you just drop it down. Sorry? No, no, you're not fast. It, now this has become the, a, a crash course to Excel, right? Yeah. Um, so you reference. This is what you do, but you refer, This will be reference your November 2016, right? Yes, the easiest. This is what we want. Solutions. The easiest. <laughs> Sorry? Yes, that it is. But, but you see, for, for this small example, and in fact, we haven't looked at pandas, uh, we, we are forced to use Excel. There are probably some people here that have used Excel a lot, so you will sit down and say to yourself, but is, is learning or is using pandas for what I'm going to do really worth it? Like if you're looking at um, those Google, Google Scholar thing, which I did, by the way. When I extracted Google Scholar documents, let me show you something. Uh, or maybe I'll wait. When I extracted those things, right, I never at all used pandas. 
I just used a, is it simple shell scripts to extract the data. So I used scholar.py, extracted the data, and then I used a combination of awk and, it was just awk actually, simple shell script really, maybe two, maybe three line, right, I have conditions. And then I concatenate all those different files because I was, I was outputting um, results for each, each of the 854 academic staff in one text file. And then I merged the text file. And then I just, because these are pipe separated, I just imported them to Excel because you're looking at less than a thousand records actually. It was just publications from 2018. So in that particular use case, the data I'm working with is not big data, right? So why would I want to, if I can use them in Excel, why not use, in fact, Google Sheets, why not do them there, right? Which is, and this is what we do even at work, right? You identify, because of the vast experience you have, you, you know the tools that work best for what you do on a daily basis. And you're able to judge to say, I think this is appropriate or not. For me, I copy, and yeah. the Yes. Yes, but, but the, the pandas thing will become useful once you create those vectors that you're going to be pushing into these machine learning algorithms, right? Um, because they have to be in a particular format. But you can also transpose them, I guess, like so. So I don't know if people have managed to concatenate that thing. Don't forget the square brackets once you feed it as a value. But we want to see how the trend is like, if people can draw that line. Um, I'm wondering if maybe the the arrangement of our, um, our class sessions should be done in such a way that we have fixed times allocated to certain things, especially when we have talks, the talks will eat up maybe 30, 40 minutes of our time. Um, then we'll have theory and practical. Maybe we should really be strategic in how we allocate time to, it's very easy to stray away and before you know it, it's 1951, right? Um, right, so are there, is anyone who has managed to draw the, okay, you've drawn the line. Yes. Oh, how is the trend like? It's surprising. It's <laughs> come down. You should see this, sorry? It has come down here. Yeah. This is interesting. <laughs> no, but, but this is interesting, right? It's a, I wonder if we could... Uh, can you share... Uh, we should figure out a way of sharing. I was thinking we can share this somehow. Can you share this in Google Docs somewhere? Yeah. Save this and share it to Google Docs and then we'll beam it up there. I could have done it, but we'll share this. It's, it's an interesting trend because... Uh, What's shocking for me is this 2018, that mm -hmm. the spike from, is that 2017? There's a huge March. spike and then. Actually, there was a time when uh, <laughs> the inflation really shot Yeah, this up. is sad, right? <laughs> this is really sad. Maybe I should plot it there as well. I, I did, this is the first time I'm actually looking at this trend, but I have data from 2011 up to 2018. I should reharvest uh, the current things. Oh, I've always thought very few people actually take the time to report about these important things, right? You just, we just wake up and we go and buy groceries in shop, right? No one asks important questions, say, how, how are things like? And I know the economists that do this, but the common man on the street, common man and woman, do they know exactly what's happening, right? How things are changing? Or maybe they're, they're content with just complaining, say, ah, life, you're yeah, dual or something, you know? Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see if we can. How is it that I was having data just in one cell? In one cell. Mm -hmm. oh. Did you do the text change? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm coming just now. I'm coming just now. It was only just in one cell. Oh, WhatsApp actually. Share it in WhatsApp. That's the easiest, right? <laughs> we remembered because our able HOD likes WhatsApp text join. Now, most people like WhatsApp. Even our people, our people in the department, communication is on WhatsApp, and I'm telling them. But how are we going to trace what's happening here? It's hard, right? Why are you using WhatsApp? And yes, let's use WhatsApp. Okay, fine, let's use WhatsApp, right? You've shared it in WhatsApp? Yeah, it's coming now from WhatsApp. Okay. <clears throat> so I can open WhatsApp group here and see if, I hope it works, it should be able to work. And, show people the trend. I don't have to redo what has already been done anyway, but also people will see this just now. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Uh, there we go. Where is it? I can't see it. You sent it to the MSC or there's a separate group. Yeah, it hasn't been delivered then, okay. 
Uh, let me see if we can. Oh, it's come now. No. Not yet. It has? Oh, it doesn't come for me. Now we've, we've reached an, an all, a flat out law here where we are physically together but we're sharing something and it's going, it's making a round trip, it's going to Europe and then coming back, right? Uh, this friend of mine who is into, for the engineers, I, I think you've dug into software defined networks, right? Anyone? Engineers, software defined networks? Or? So he did a survey a while back, yes, right? A while back where he was tracing, he's obsessed with these NRNs like Xamarin and whatnot. So he was tracing packets and realized that the vast majority of packets, right, internet packets, they go to, to Europe first before they come back down. So the argument is, why are we doing that, right? Doesn't make sense, right? But our engineers are busy at work, hopefully, but <laughs> um, it doesn't come to mind anyway, but yeah, it's similar to that, actually. It would have been nice if it was, uh, it came here as well, but I haven't gotten it on my... I'm confused why it was, everything was going in one second. Oh. Can I email it to the group? Email it as well, please. The forum. <laughs> yes, please. That's what the forum is for. Well, in part, I guess. Uh, so I'll just, for those of us that haven't really seen the results, I'll just redo this Y and, and X like so. And then I'll come back here and just say, hopefully, just. Uh, what are these trends for? Sorry? The, these trends. Yes. Uh, I don't know what we'd call them. So this is what people have generated. Now. It does come on WhatsApp. It has? It hasn't come on mine. I don't yeah. know why. Oh, there we go. I don't know why. I, there's something wrong with my... Oh, there we go. It's here now, finally. Okay, this is it. So this is what we were talking about. So for those of us, we were, we were saying, uh, why is it that from, from 2017, there was suddenly a spike, right? Especially here. This is worrying, is it? Yeah. We don't know. Maybe... We don't know what happened here, but maybe the economists can explain what happened here. Uh, usually, by the way, when, we, when you're interpreting your results, once you, you're evaluating whatever model you're going to have, you will have to explain as part of the discussion to say, if there are funny spikes, you, you must explain, right? That's why the, the graphs are not there to put them there. So if it's something like this, you explain to say, um, the reason why this is the case is ABCD. Right? Do we want to try out the pie chart and the bar charts? Uh, if there are people that are struggling, or that haven't done this yet, I can go around as the others are doing there. Can we do the bar? Let's try the bar chart to see the, 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 the relative cost for the different towns that JCT, JCTR does these surveys in. So I want to see which is the most expensive city or town. You can go a step further once you get home, say, where is Carpenter the cheapest? You'd be surprised, or Mini Mill, right? You notice that, um, and you can explain this is logic, really. You notice that um, obvious people, places that are f closer to water bodies, uh, fish is cheaper. Places where they don't grow maize, Mini Mill is expensive, right? And you can see the trends. Um, so in case you're thinking of starting a business, uh, and our friend, I wonder if the business people see these trends and say, should I start a business of selling mini -mi in maybe Kasama because maybe the people there don't cultivate a lot of maize, right? So I don't know if people think about, uh, do you think people think about this, the no. business people, I don't know, trends? I have a friend of mine, yes, I have this uh, colleague of mine, I worked with him, he works for Ratsa. At some point, uh, I was telling, is there anyone from Nats? I was telling him, can we get a database, because it's a database of all vehicles, right? If, if the people that are in the business of selling car parts and whatnot, you notice that maybe, what are these vehicles that people are obsessing about? They are Toyota, this the latest thing on the Zambian market, it's Toyota what? I'd forgotten. Not Toyota Corolla, but it's a Toyota something, it looks nice or something. No, not in my cases. No. I think so, yeah. Now, I hate to use this analogy, but there was a scandal last time where a guy was caught with someone, and he was in that type of vehicle, you know. But 
<laughs> but anyway, so if you have if you have that data, right? We know that people that sell these parts will be able to sell, will be able to stock up on the most important parts. So you go to a, you have the maybe you, you have a fancy German machine like a BMW, and you go somewhere and say the parts of sorry. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Toyota Allion, right? <laughs> yeah. So you know that there's a there's an increase in the trends of people buying Allion. So we must talk up on parts with more Allions, right? But hey, can we dra Can we now go to the next part where we we do this? The bar chart showing the cost of B the BNB cost in the different provinces. So the data is here, ladies and gentlemen. It's here, right? Sales or row number 54 and 55 has the town, the town or city, the row right, right below it is the BNB value, right? And the only thing we wanted people to. So the, the, the row number 54 and 55. So we are plotting town against the value, but it's a bar plot this time around. But I want us to also experiment with, uh, because the, we have plenty of bar plots. Maybe we can have a legend as well, right? This time around. And different colors for the bar plots. There are how many? One, two, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 15. 15 towns that they generate this for. Uh, don't ask me how they identify the towns, I don't know how. I don't know why HRD is not here, for instance, but. So the bar chart. And the legend. So what we want is something similar or akin to this. Um, it's, it's a simple, these are all simple graphs are going to be, oh, someone used a permanent mark or something. So what we want to do is, uh, so we'll have Lusaka, oh, so we'll have, I don't know if people can, why, who would do this? So we'd have uh, Lusaka maybe, if Lusaka is the most expensive city, Chipata, right? Lusaka, this was a, a different color. Chipata maybe would be a hatch like so. This is Lusaka, Chipata, Mansa, right? Yeah, so the legend is the... The legend would be the colors. So maybe this is red, blue, and whatnot. So we just want to see the relative cost. I mean, this is... Right, the legend, remember what I said about... Uh, if, you, if you look at... Uh, uh, if we wanted to say, uh, this is bad. It's, it's a label, so you feed, there is a label parameter. So for each plot that you are generating, it has a label parameter, like if you wanted to, uh, this is, I need to kill it somehow. I guess I can kill it from here. Uh, um, so if we had uh, x is equal to, Let's say this is Lusaka. Now I won't use a bar plot here. I'll use because I want us to just just do a, a little bit of thinking here. I'll draw a line, right? Uh, this ABC against ten to you. You remember this plt dot plot? Okay, and then I'll say uh, sorry. I'll say Z is equal to. This was retarded. I'll say z is equal to plus 10. It's 40 plus 10 is 15 plus 10 is 20. So I'll say z is equal to that. Now I'll say plt dot plot, right? I'm plotting x comma y first. And then I'll say plt dot plot plot x comma x comma z, plt, sorry. And then I'll say plt dot show. Now, so what we did, you remember what we did there was we said uh, before, we, and I want, we can't, can we, we can't render this. So what we did when we were drawing the last time, we said, you have an optional parameter that you feed here for the, le le the legend, right? So it has to be a label. And then in this case, we're just giving this label the color. It's going to be red. 
and then the PLT X comma Z will also give it a label, right? It's going to be blue. And then now we'll call PLT with legend, right? And then finally we'll render the plot, yeah? So we specified the aesthetics, now we render the plot, dot show. And then it comes with the legend up there. So you do, you do the same thing, only this time around what we are plotting is not a, a, line, a line graph, but it's a, it's a bar plot. So we had x, y, and z. Mm -hmm. So we, we are doing two. Th we are, what we what we what we are doing here is uh, we are oh this is oh, laugh at us right. What we are doing is uh, instead of just calling plt dot plot with just the x x values and the y values, we are giving it an extra parameter which is the label. The label is just going to correspond to the color that's going to represent the line. In this case, it's red. The next plot is x comma z because our x values are the same, a, b, c. The only things that are changing are, are the, the, y, the y values, yeah? So the, the extra parameter that we need is just a label with the color. The resulting graph is like so. Same x values, which is why we're using x, but different y values. And then our legend. Oh, you mean for the, the thing we're going to do? In Z? Yeah, let's just go back to the last bit. Yes. Yeah, there's X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z. So, so X, ooh, I'll, I'll, I'll exit this. I'll exit this, right? So, X, these are the, the axis labels, the X, axis values. These are going to be the same. In fact, for a plot, your line plot will always have the same, um, you, use, you reuse the same x-axis values, right? Y are just uh, random values corresponding to 10, 5, and 20. Z is the same data type as x, but different values because you just wanted to showcase that the lines are different. I mean, in an ideal case, the lines always have different values. Right? So we are, we are plotting x, we are plotting X against Y and X against Z, yes, which is why we had two lines. <coughs> I, was, I was hoping we'd get to, hmm. I, I, I was hoping we'd get to a thing, yeah? pandas, but uh, this is, I, I guess I underestimated this. We'll, we'll skip the pie chart maybe, I don't know, maybe, we, but I'm looking at the time, I don't know. Might as well just do the pie chart, looking at the time, and then we'll, we'll transition to pandas quickly next. It doesn't take long, because Matt um, next week and uh, next week because Matt because the scikit learn um, we won't really we won't really the only thing we'll do with scikit learn is just install it, right? In fact, we can already install it once we get home because we know that it's as easy as doing it. Beep three space install space sk learn. Right, that's all. And then we'll immediately get into lecture number three. I think that should be fine. Oh, so we'll, we'll do, once we get home, please, because it doesn't look like we'll do pandas and psychic lane. I want us to do the bar plot and the pie chart, I guess. I'm looking at the time here, right? But once we, get, we should come, when we come back next week on Tuesday, we must come with, um, there are two other libraries already installed because the installation process is the same. pip or pip3 space install pandas for pandas. Boom, it will install it for you. For me, it's already installed. And then for scikit-learn, it's pip or pip3 space install sklearn, right? Boom, it's already installed for me as well. It's not scikit-learn, it's sklearn, right? But I guess you figure that out once you... Pandas pandas. It's pandas, yeah. Uh, scikit-learn is sklearn. So SK, learn. And I think the slides which I shall share, you shall find this on slide number, you shall find these things on, for, ooh, for pan, oh. This is a shock. SK, SK, learn. SK, learn. For pandas, I'm sorry, I'll change this slide before I share it. There was supposed to be a slide showing the installation of pandas, but for, you notice what, for SK, learn, it's here on slide number 56 where, you have uh, this command here, pip3 or pip space install sklearn. Okay. I'll share this slide, sklearn.
Um, now the, the thing, the deep learning thing I was, I was attending, right? And I hope people have applied the deep learning and uh, for the sponsored students. Has anyone bothered? I shared something on the mailing list, no. Usually people that are busy working are not interested. <laughs> but if, if, it, if it happens to be during a period when maybe the long holiday, that long holiday or something, it's worth applying and who knows, right? You, this is where you meet people doing interesting things in Africa and who knows, you get ideas. But the, this guy, he's, um, he's Spanish or something, I think he's Italian. When I was asking him what platform are we going to be using, he told me, shake it, shake it learn. And I, I thought it was a new thing. But, but during, the, <laughs> during the, the, the thing, the lesson itself, it turns out it was psychic lane, but it's a pronunciation, right? But I thought that was strange you know, and funny. But yeah, has anyone managed the bar plot? Or oh, it's becoming boring now, maybe. Is it what? Sorry? I was hoping part of the exercise would figure out the appropriate function to use, actually. But it turns out the function is, uh, is uh, plt dot bar. And I think people have done this. They're looking at me like, <laughs> looking at me like, what's happening here? Yeah, it's dot bar. Mm -hmm. I've oh, more okay. <clears throat> at some stage, there are statics, right? Because the plot, his plot, by the way, it's, it's the data is too squished because um, because the names of the labels, the x-axis labels, are horizontal. As homework, as part of homework, you can go and look up how you can reorient them. You know how in Excel or whatever fancy tool you use, the, the, the axis labels, right? You can, if, if, it's, if you're plotting the numbers one, two, three on the x-axis, you can choose to say, I don't want one to be like, oh, I don't want one to be like so, but one would be like so, one, two, right? So the same goes for Lusaka, to make it look beautiful, you can, you can, you can flip the labels using 90 degrees, right? So that you have Lusaka, Chipata, it, well, it would be more Chipata, it would be more aesthetically pleasing as opposed to having them horizontal, they would be squished. Unless if you just decide to make up the short names for the towns, Lusaka, LSK, Chipata, CPT or something, and then you plot against those, I guess. In which case, part of your labels perhaps, uh, I wonder if you can have text for the labels. Your labels could, your legend could have, um, Something like LSK and the color or something. I don't know. Wish it would magically have actually. But now, I just have one thing. Uh, yes. Are you managing is it, here? Is it okay? Isn't it supposed to be Sorry? different types? No, colors. So you forgot the label variable. Right? Did you I've, use the label? Uh, the colors? No, you haven't. I've, I've used the label, label word. Uh, mm. How do you use the colors now? Um, this is the thing here. And I guess as part, as part of exercise, can you <laughs> dynamically loop through those things and assign them labels? <coughs> hmm. yeah, this is interesting. I, I, I actually don't know how to do this. I've not done this before, I think. I this is, like it presents an interesting question. His, his question is, uh, how do we include, and maybe there's, there's a hint in the documents, how do we include the labels for those bar plot entries, right? We have a, a whole bar, sorry? The colors. Mm, the, the colors, right, right. So those are the labels? Th those would be the labels, yes. Okay. Those would be the labels. But because it's, um, I wonder if, I think there should be a way. Let's, let's try it out, right, import. And by the way, uh, we would not be doing this when we're actually working on the mini projects, right? Instead of you doing trial and error like I'm going to do here to check the help functions, if you don't understand how to read the help functions, a cheap trick is Stack Overflow for Google, right? How do you include labels to a legend for a bar plot, for instance? For the mini project, you want to cut down on the amount of time you're spending on trivial things, right? You want to focus more on the more important things, anyway. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if uh, plt dot bar. <clears throat> Sorry, there's what? Where is that? Oh, there we go. Oh, perfect. Okay. So, so here's the thing, right? Uh, a, a way to, a way to. Thanks for doing this. For 
So it appears. Uh, The usual examples here, it appears you give it a, apparently calling it a scale of colors. Let me go back here. Okay, do you get that, that help? Help, oh, uh, you just, you okay. issue help on the, on the, oh, oh, so it's, good. it's a bar in this case. Okay. But you should download the, the manual, right? For, in fact, you must download, besides installing, please download the manual for Matplotlib, Pandas, and, Psychic lane will become really useful as you are. <coughs> so, pandas, psychic lane, and mat, matplotlib. Uh, so that you, a nice HTML reference manual that they are online, there's online documentation, but you want to have it locally so that when, instead of doing what I'm doing here, you just open up the manual. And, because that's, when you're programming, in fact, we are taught that you never remember things, right? You, there's a reason you have a manual. <laughs> So, so uh, we can do a trial here, a test, I guess, and say uh, <clears throat> x is equal to 1, 2, a, b, y is equal to 20 and 50, and then z is equal to, <clears throat> I hope this works, here's to hopping blue, red, and then we can just say pot dot bar. <coughs> did, you do, did you do x, y initially, right? pot dot show, let's just see if this works. It works. Um, and then I'll close this now and try and integrate the scalar that they're uh, saying we should use, right? So same values, I'll just say p dot bar, uh, x, y, and then color. Now, the other way you know that it's Americans or the British, right? If you use R, and I usually com confuse these things. If I use, when I'm working with R, the person who developed R is from New Zealand. Is it Australia or New Zealand? So he uses anything to do with color has an OU, right? But for the Americans, it's usually the color variables are like so. <clears throat> so P-O-T dot show. So, so, so it appears the, the way that you're going to do is those, you'd have to create an array or a list of, <laughs> a list of colors for all those different towns, give them different colors, right? And then you feed, you feed your, your bar, your plt.bar function with the optional color parameter which is going to equate to this list of colors, like so. So I created a list of colors Z, that has the values red and blue. So red is going to be for this bar plot. Blue is going to be for this bar plot. And then notice that I'm calling the bar function, I'm drawing the bar plot with X comma Y, the values, and the other optional or named parameter color with N, uh, values equal to this list or array of colors. And then I come up with this bar plot. Uh, oh, and I forgot, I'm sorry, what I should have done is, what you should do is, you say bar plot, you plot the bar like this, and then you say pot dot legend as well, right? And then you say pot dot show. So that the, the, the legend, uh, where is that? Did I do something wrong here? Now we'll have to figure out how to show the legend as well for the, because it's different. Uh, we can check the help manual as well. I thought we would do the same thing as we did for uh, <laughs> for for the line plot, but it appears it doesn't work, right? <clears throat> but but thank 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 goodness for the help manual. We can refer to it and see if there's a parameter that is associated with the legend. Because ultimately, what we'd want to do is, if you have a lot of those bars, you want to to have something on top there that shows you'd say blue or red is for that and whatnot, right? Is this, is this making some sense, by the way? Now, I, 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 I'll have to apologize that we spent the entire class session <laughs> <laughs> looking at Matplotlib, although we dedicated the prior <laughs> session. So the reason I suggested that we do a crash course is I, I thought um, some, the vast majority of people would have had some prior experience working with Python, but it appears not, right? 
<clears throat> incidentally, for those of us that have been following education in the higher sector, a lot of research, extensive research has been done. Python is one of those programming languages that have been identified as being appropriate for beginners, beginner programmers. Places also do not use Java as the language, uh, as your first language, right? as the language that is used to introduce you to programming. It's either JavaScript or Python. They're easy to program. With JavaScript, you don't even have to install anything else. You just come to your, yes, you just come to your browser like I, I will do just now. No, it's story time here. But uh, you know, I can just come here. Uh, I'll just come to my browser and then I can already start programming, right? Uh, JavaScript, because my browser has my console dot. Now I'll face JavaScript, um, I guess, hello world, right? And I've always wondered if hello world is lowercase, world is lowercase, and you can program already, you can do some, so the, the entry, the entry, now we're not teaching programming, but I thought I'd mention it, the entry, the, the entry barrier is far lower than Java. Install the compiler, you know. <laughs> <laughs> install Java, Java and whatnot, right? It's sad. For Python, install the interpreter. But with JavaScript, open your browser, start programming, right? But people don't want to, anyway. The, the, is it the, the hour of code that happens every now, year now? The, I think most of the, the language that is used is JavaScript, actually, if you've been following that now. Trying to introduce people to programming. Apparently, there are people that are advocating for this notion that um, programming should be like maths now, right? If you look around with what's happening now, it should be like mathematics, where if you're in school, you're in grade five or seven, you must learn how to program. But I don't know how far we are with, uh, I don't know if there are any questions. Uh, have we managed the, the bar plot? Yeah. Where is it? You want to fix the Windows thing, or maybe install the virtual machine, which I, I've shared. It's, space, it's a special issue. Oh, you, oh, you need space, okay. Is space expensive these days? Now, I, it's so cheap now that uh, when I was buying this thing, I regret, this. one of the biggest mistakes I've made in life is investing money to buy this. It makes noise, the fun, right? And it only has two ports, USB ports. It's terrible, no, it's a line of uh, ThinkPad. This is a, an idea pad. But I couldn't find a, a ThinkPad. It's, it's a line of Lenovo. Now, when I... Space has become so cheap that when I bought this, I immediately swapped it with an SSD drive, right? I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that Ms. Mwanga is saying I don't have space here. But <laughs> you must move the movies to an external hard disk. But we must maybe try and see. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to see how best we can, we can help. But because I'm not an expert at Windows here, you'd have to sort out that issue somehow. Yeah, it would be nice by the time we are getting into the thick of things if all of us had all the tools we need for us to continue working. Yeah? Bar plots, have people managed? Or we are, we are parting ways here? The bar plot, have we managed? Oh, oh did I see? Where is it? It'd be nice. Oh, the colors, it's just an array. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you have to go back. Now, we know you're paid money, so there's an incentive, right? I'm going to add Carrot. the colors now. So <laughs> yeah, we're already there. It's an array. It, it, it was in double quotes? Or it can be single or double. It's, it's, a, it's a string, anyway. But, but there were some, some quotes there. Yes. It, it has to be quoted. Not, not the array. Oh, the, the color itself? So the color, because it's an array, just say color is equal to the name of the array. Or in fact, you can do this, yeah? Hey, have, I tr have you tried this? It's two of them, right? Look at this. Uh, I hope this works. Red, blue. Yay, I hope it works. Plot dot bar, uh, dot show. It turns out the colors can also, you can also use the, just the letter instead of red and, but these are things that you find out eventually, right? So instead of red, blue, you can just say R, B. You can also use those hexadecimal values that you find in HTML uh, files, right? Hash and if you yeah, know the. I was really struggling to pick the colors there. Those I could have been guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Usually there are tools you can use where you go online and you, 
it, it can actually generate those hexadecimal things for you, right? The hash and the, yeah, yeah. If you are, if you obsess a lot about uh, making beautiful plots, I mean, that's something to do in it, but you anyway. know. All right, I guess this was, uh, this is, uh, be nice, we'll see you on Tuesday, but I'm still around here for those of us that still want to play, uh, understand. Yes, okay. Let me come through and, what you can do is next Tuesday, I will be here early. Uh, we can do a boot camp because usually the usually people in here don't know what they do. We can we can come 30 minutes early and we can chat about some of these things. Like five minutes. Yes, today five minutes is fine. Yes, yes. Sorry? Ah, so pandas. You, you've installed pandas? Not yet? So peep uh, install pandas. Install, yes. Don't worry, these things you pick up as, okay. as you use them more and more. You, this will be a thing of the past, but, actually. Uh, yeah, when you install Python 3, it has to be PIP 3, because you have two versions of Python. Uh -huh. Unless you uninstall that. Hi, Mr. Nonge. Sorry? Hmm? OK. Yes. On the first one. The was that the, the JCTR or yeah, like okay? Yeah, it's memory. Do you want to just quickly join us? Maybe we can perhaps the things that you we might yeah. do that together actually. Yeah. We can kill multiple stones with one bird. No, I flipped things. Multiple birds with one stone. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And I'm glad you. Okay. So the first thing we need to do, right? Uh, that there are some things we need to get. Now I have an idea pad as well. Or shooting it because it makes so much noise. I don't know if it does the same thing for you. But um, so the first thing we want to do is at some stage we need to get into the habit of using a text editor or an IDE like Wing instead of typing here. But um, so first step is we said we import right the library. Can we do that? I think you know how to import as well. Okay, Let, let's try that out. Let's import. Have you did you do the line chart for yes, Jason? Okay. Okay. Right. So what we're importing is um, you see we have installed the library called Matplot Matplotlib right. That's the one we're using. But we're importing it in a certain way. We are specifically interested in a module called PyPlot, which sits in Matplotlib. So for us to install it, it has to be the library name dot, we use a dot operator, so Matplotlib dot, right? Yes, Matplotlib dot. And this is very important because when it comes to plotting, these are the things we're going to be using. Yes. Yes, so the dot simply means, like in this case, we're saying we will be using the module PyPlot, which is sitting in the library called Matplotlib. Right, as yes. PLT. Some, another thing I should mention here is, so we didn't install Matplotlib. We can open CMD. So, did you install, yes, did you, you didn't install Matplotlib, right? I think we are on different Yeah, different, yeah, 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 sure, yes, yes, I'll come through. Sure, I'll come through. Yeah, okay. okay, so it's there. Uh, then we probably made a mistake with the spelling. Where's the up arrow? So it's PyPlot. PyPlot, no? Yeah. So you see, we are, we are interested in, we're interested in a module called PyPlot, which sits in the Matplotlib library, right? So after P, there's an L. Um, so once we import that module now, enter, we import the module, just press enter. When we import that module now, we can make use of the various functions that sit in those modules, right? One of the functions that sits in there is a simple plot function which just draws a simple line. You understand that or we can do that? Okay, all right. So maybe we can go to the JCTR thing then. Which one do you want us to start with? The JCTR. Okay, so for the JCTR, the first one, we want to plot a simple line, right? So if you go to the data set, the JCTR data set, 
the interesting thing about the JCTR dataset in comparison to the other examples, the trivial examples we used is the fact that the x-axis is going to be what? Those are labels, right? So the data type has to be a string, right? Uh, no, let's go to, oh, you downloaded it? Can you go to downloads? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, BNB. Uh -huh. So you can just open one of these, maybe that, yeah. <coughs> Okay, so what we said was, um, um, because you're using Excel, we wanted to, okay, as a first step, this, this has nothing to do with Python, by the way, the Python things we're using, but we wanted to, to kind of clean up this data so that by the time we're feeding it into the, the, the functions within uh, PyPlot, um, it's in a format that PyPlot is going to recognize, right? So a nice thing, can I open this? Okay. Um, Nice thing to do is to just, um, you probably want to get in the habit of using this. Uh, Excel I haven't used a lot, but um, I've used this a lot. Too. So what we want to do is we, we just want to quickly convert this into a form that people is going to accept. Specifically, the x-axis is going to be strings, right? And then the, the, um, the y-axis is going to be those those amounts which are floats, right? Mm -hmm. So we do two things. Number one, we convert those November 2016 or Nov 2016, this 2016, all the way up to April, APR 2018 or 18 into strings, right? That are comma separated. The second step is because those float values have a comma, um, we want to remove that comma. So we're just going to use a simple, um, a simple thing here, I'll show, I'll show us. Just copy paste here. So I just copy copy pasting that content from here. Um, so just paste those values. So that, uh, right. So because we've already selected, I guess we can just say Control F. In fact, we should be doing this, and I'll be telling you. Um, Control F. I just think it's still working. Let's just wait for it. Okay. And then just click on the is it this menu item? Menu. Yeah. No, the more, no, the more, yeah. Okay. And then just say, so comma, type the comma. We will replace all indices of commas with nothing, right? So replace all, replace all. So what we were, what we are doing is just taking time here. You say done? It's not working, is it? Just say done, we'll see if we can do this again. No, we were trying to replace everything oh, that has a comma. Mm -hmm. Okay, instead I'll just do this. This is kind of, just say uh, replace, um, replace uh, commas. Re replace this hi sorry yes the summaries also oh, the format that's there is just uh it's in the email we're saying 12 point uh, size using a serif font, so Times New Roman or Liberation Serif, and then uh, one inch margins, um, and then that's it actually. And then it's 250 words maximum, so half a page. Sorry? No, 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 it's just a short summary, really. No, you can include references if you want to, but if, if, if there's need to. Yes. I'm, I was trying to. This is weird. I thought we'd replace this. 
Yeah. But of course, they should sit inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has to be parentheses. So you're pushing X over Y. Push it. Let Come on. Yes. There we go. Done. Hmm? But it hasn't, right? Sorry? Hmm. Oh, it looks like. Oh, it has. You know what? It did, but uh, no, it did. Look at the. Look at the, the context. It did, but it automatically formats the things for you. Okay, so now what we were saying is we will say. If it did, then it reverts. No, it did, but the way it shows the numbers, it's intelligent enough to know that this is a number. So it puts that for you. But the actual content is done. Yeah, so what we want to do now is to do our text join. And then the way that we have text join. Text join. And then. We are separating them by a comma, right? Um, we want to skip or don't skip. Hi. The paper summary is due next week on Monday, which is the 8th of April. Oh, oh you didn't get the mail I sent. Just search for CS. This thing normally does funny things to just search for CSC 5741 at onza.zm right <clears throat> oh yeah oh, we'll see you when you see us okay, okay. soon hoping now the with the Nkandru April Fool's Day thing I don't know what's happening at this place <laughs> uh, I don't know that's what the our our able leaders are saying um, B2, is that, okay, this is, this is a B2 to L2. B2, yeah, this yeah, to L2, so I just want to check. Oh, just want to Yes, so okay. B2 to L2. To L2. Okay. This is what we want, okay. the first one. Mm -hmm. um, then we just keep this here. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, and then the formula, for the we are putting the form now in here. Yeah, I want to move it to this formula is what in, in B four. Yes. So, but I want us to move it um, to the next line because I want the the first line to have not that it matters if we have used. I want the first line to have um, the November themes there, right? So I'm going to come here and say instead of B twelve, so say. A to, uh, B1 now, right? Mm -hmm. For the months, right? B1 to L1, yeah? So that we have the November things now. So you, you yeah, for the months, you remove the commas, the, the, not the comma, but the, the what is it called? The apostrophe? You remove the, the apostrophe for this, for the months, huh? You for the months. Did it, it didn't have, but what we, what we need to do again is to create them, and it's easy. What we just do is we just use the concatenate function. Okay. But when you, you notice that when you're using Python, by the way, mm -hmm. this is easy to do. Okay. There are functions that you use when you're processing information like so. I wanted to ask, uh, when you, when you said we should use the main dots of this, oh, okay, it's okay to use the, when you're talking about the you said it's okay to use the... The, the, the IEE format. Yes, the IEEE format. Or then, what's the Mendeley? The other one? SEM. There's SEM and IEEE, but you want to use Mendeley because Mendeley will allow you to convert things to different formats. I mean, some people say use APA. When you're using Mendeley, it's just a, you flip a switch to say, I'm going to use this. You know, and it's a, we can have another, maybe we can dedicate what we're thinking because it's three hours, we can have five minute segments where we just talk about these funny tools and people play around with them. I think it would be helpful. Um, but I guess this as well has to be, uh, this thing is, um, okay, I'll just say text. Is that MMM? Hmm? Oh, you've, ma you've managed? 
you know, the, our, our, you know what I was trying to do? This thing is, is messing up things, but let me, let me do this. I will, let me share the, because this, this is trivial stuff. I'll share, not trivial, but it's not important. I'll share already formatted things just now. Oh, why are we doing this? Isn't that where I can put a thumb or something? <laughs> Like in the banks, right? If you don't know how to write your name, they take your thumbprint or something. Or put it in a warehouse. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. It's an attachment, but uh, I don't know if people have finally managed to get, besides uh, the two people from ZRA now, I don't know if ZRA has anything to do with this, but they're the only two people that can access mood, right? That could access mood. I don't know if the others have tried now. The, the reason I didn't follow up, because I noticed Dr. Piri was sorting it out for us. I promise I would, right? But Dr. Piri said follow up with Monica and whatnot, right? Yeah, but, you know. Please, at home, before you sleep, <laughs> so that you dream about... Uh, Miss Inongi, I'm, I'm just uh, going to share. We are not done. We are not done. I need to be added to... to weren't you added by David to the mailing list? No. Oh. And before that, there's that one for labels. I haven't done it. I think that's the Yes, we shall help that as well. We shall stick around and help. Mm -hmm. The one where I have to specify the color and the label. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Then also add the name. Yes. Then I'll go satisfied. Of course. <laughs> okay, so we can download the file. So we'll just go to um, the site. Yeah. Um, okay. Maybe here. No? I had it in this one. Just say. We can just click in here and then we'll... Yeah. Oh, there we go. Then just... Let's just download uh, the text for example.txt. <coughs> and then just copy that across. So, what we were wanting to do everything, actually, including the... So, yeah. This, no, this is... This is just for practice to make sure that by the time we get into the next stages, we know what's happening. In fact, as we're walking through code, uh, this is important because as we're showcasing examples, people will know. Yeah, just paste. <clears throat> so, you see what, we've, what you've just pasted are the values that we're going to plot this thing against, right? Um, so, so yes. So, plotting the plot is as easy as just calling PLT, so PLT, which is the library, right, PyPlot in matplotlib, or the module PyPlot in matplotlib library dot bar. So before you show it, you must render the, the thing, the object that you want to show. Yes, so is it a bar plot, is it a line plot? So no, x comma y. So we are plotting x values comma y value. But it's a function, so it must be wrapped in parentheses. Yeah. So bar, open parenthesis, x, comma, y, close parenthesis, and then enter. It's going to show you the object is there, right? And then you say plt now to render it, you use the show command dot show. Yes, the parenthesis, but they're empty, right? Right, but now comes the part where um, where you have to, and you've come at the right time. Now comes the part where you can close this. Where, how do you show the colors now? Because it doesn't make sense sometimes to have bar plots without colors, right? So what you have to do is um, create an array of colors. So for now, we'll just, we'll just alternate between two colors. Is that fine? Red and blue, maybe red, yellow. Red and blue, just so we'll have red and blue, but you can have multiple colors. So what we'll do is, what the bar plot function does is it accepts an optional parameter 
a name parameter called color mm. that takes in um, an array or a list of colors. Enjoy. See you on Tuesday. Thanks. More practice. And please install pandas and uh, shikit learn. Psychic learn. Um, so we must create an array. But that array must have how many values? The same values as x or y. So you can just, a cheap trick of finding out how many values you need is just type len. Len. You want to try that out? Open parenthesis. X. Close parenthesis and then enter. So this shows you that, this shows you the number of items that you have in here. In so you must create another array that will have 15. Oh, you have 15 here, she has 18. So you must create an array of colors, 18 colors in your case, 18 colors in your case. Mm -hmm. So it's as easy as, you can name it Z. So Z is equal to square, because it's an array. Oh, yeah. Now these have to be, in, they are strings, so they have to be in quotes. So you can have red. Double quotes. Yes, double quotes or single quotes. A string is double, red. single. Red, comma, okay. or R, or, or yeah, comma. We'll just use red and blue. So let's just alternate between red and blue. We'll do this 18 times. So red, one, blue, two. The third one is going to be red again. But you can have different colors. So red, blue, 15 times. And what? Well, thank you. <laughs> so you can just copy. Oh, you <laughs> can <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the way you copied, it's fine. You can remember like this. Oh, you, I don't know. It's Windows, right? You can you can just select again. <laughs> That's what I've really done. Do How do you copy this? Just control C. No. Ah, we are Okay, it's fine. I can just. Return. How do you copy? I don't know how you copy. Maybe Control Shift C. Yeah. <laughs> or right click maybe. Control, control C is not working. Well, yeah. Control C is not working. No, it cancels the interpreter. Um, so here's the other way. There you go. You can go to your text editor somewhere, Notepad, and just yeah, do that. Just do this. And then do the trick you wanted to do. This is so. Once you write red, blue, red, you can just copy across, including the comma, so that instead of redoing things, oh, yeah. So just open Notepad. You can do it. Maybe Notepad somewhere. How? Do, yeah. Start typing Notepad. N O P N this one is it Yeah, that's fine. Is um does this one is this a good ID this one? Which one? Which one is this it? One? Oh, Atom. Atom. I've never I've, I've never really used okay, Atom before, but it, people speak highly of it, so but can it work with the with the Python? Python? I'm not sure. Not sure. I've not used it before. Probably if it's just one of those generic uh, IDEs. So what you want to do is z is equal to square bracket r, and then you can just copy the r in quotes. How many are those? They're already 15? 15, 12, so I need three. Yeah, and then you can just copy yeah. and paste. So you can count, I guess. Three, two, three. Yeah. So now I can work. And the other one was not complete one. Okay. You remove the V and then do another one. Just remove okay. it. Enter. And then now you can you can do what you did before. Instead of saying that x comma y, you can have a comma, x comma y comma, comma, color with no u. C O L O R equals Z. Close. Oh. Yes. Cool. Enter. Now at your own time and then plt dot show. At your own time you want to go and explore what else is what other functions you can use for the bar plot, for instance, to include the the y axis and the x axis levels. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. oh, no comma at the end. Okay. That's where we ended today. Yes. Oh, okay. So I'm um, at power with that. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> okay, and then we can now call. We can call this, but with no, but with an extra. Redo this up, and then no, no down until we have the bar. Uh -huh. Backspace again. That's fine. <laughs> up, 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 
until you have the back. Yeah, remove backspace, comma. There's a named parameter called color. So you type in color is equal to Z. Color accepts an array. <clears throat> that corresponds to the number of um, things that you want to plot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Close. And then enter, and then you can do a PO, PO, PT dot show. And then it's empty, yeah, yeah. Yeah. At your own time. Uh, and also, just look up how you can flip these labels. You see, they are overwritten because yeah. there's no space. You can flip them in 90 degree angle. There's a function for that. Okay. You can do it before you sleep. There's still time. Yes. One more thing for Sorry? Yes, I can. Let me know if people want to be early. Yeah, we need. We want to make sure because the plan today, right? I came with lecture slide number three. The plan today was for us to quickly, you know, just gloss over this and then get to three. But I think it's important that we spend a little bit of time here so that people understand before we proceed. Anyway. Uh, yeah, you should. It's, uh, it, it, don't worry. With time, it's by the time we're getting to to maybe mid April, I think people should be fine. Yeah. I, I want, okay, I want to Mendeley. Yeah, Mendeley, so that so that I don't have to worry about Excel. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, right. Yeah. 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 Tuesday as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you want us when you come oh, you have to go, right? <laughs> All right. On Tuesday. Uh, I'll send a message or to say I'm I'm here early, I will be here early, I'll send a message. What's what's your email address? Oh, you did. Okay, we can we can come over and then let's do this together before Dr. Nirenda comes through again and shows us the sign, the universal sign for his time up, right? Uh, or oh, we are running out of time. Well, I can so, send you another email. No, I'm sure I got it. Are you sure you sent it? Yes, I did. Where is it? You sent me mail. What's your email address? Mumbi. Mumbi. M N. M N. Yes, at gmail.com. Oh wow, I didn't see this. This, like so? Yeah. This. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, for something we can do in less than a minute, why not do it right now, right? Yeah. Uh, hey, sure, we'll see you on Tuesday, Miss Inonga. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I'm sure there's more things to be done in, yeah. in advanced uh, XXX. I don't know what advanced things you're doing here. Uh, so I'm surprised that you're not here, right? Mumbi. Oh, wow. I feel sheepish here. Are you sure you don't have another email that was added? No, that's my, my the only email. We apologize. So we've just added you just now. Am I able to what are your full, full names again? Nemo and Nemo and Am I able to see the previous? No. You'll be able to see the previous ones using your Unza email. What's your Unza email? 2018? 2018. Mm -hmm. 24. 24? 62? 32. 32. But then when I try to, to log in with that email address, remember we, we were using it sometime back. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember the password. So today I was trying to log in with it, but telling me there's no account associated. Ah, you see. Um, in that case, what I can do is uh, try and, because I, we don't have control over the the configuration that specifies that external emails are able to view this via the web interface uh, is done by CICT, so there's little I can do. So for now, uh, and I'm wondering how I'm going to forward these things to you. I can forward them. Uh, sorry, what's your, 
me just go back here or here close that <coughs> so you've been added what, 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 what let's try and see i'm wondering why you haven't been created yet 2018 i sent them these names 2018 uh, 24 mm -hmm. 62 30. boom ah ah <laughs> 2018 24 62 32 <laughs> You changed it? Yes, we changed it together. We changed it together? Yes. In, my, in the class, you were using my account. <coughs> ah, I see. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, but then the problem is I think I didn't write any number. I know you it's said I sat with an art sign? Yes. Art? You said, is, did you say memory or mumbi or something? I need a memory. I need my student number, I think. 2018? Uh, 24? 24? Okay. Hmm. Ha, ah, wait a minute. I must have done something here. Hopefully. Mm. And I'll open all of them just to. Yeah, I think we, we wrote it So what I can do is um, I can forward, um, you said which emails did you need for now, going forward? Uh, the ones for the mini project mm -hmm. and also the, the papers we are reading. Okay. So we can do it just now, actually, so you see them. Um, so I'll just check for. Mm. Uh, the ones with, you know what, this is stupid. I should have done two, CSC that must have an attachment <coughs> so what i'll do is i will open this forward this to you we didn't even have the discussion here which is sad <laughs> mumbi m right mn at gmail.com So you can just go to, okay, let me just do this. You, you might need to follow up a uh, password. You also want to go to CICT or wherever it is you have these things changed mm -hmm. and have them reset the password. Just ask them to reset the password. It's an easy thing. I'm wondering why, how we forgot, right? But. Um, yeah. Okay, and then I'm sending mini project as well. Yes. And then I need to select the project. That's on that's on uh, Google Classroom. So, th so the selecting of the project is actually done. Um, mm. If you look at this mini project thing, this thing here mm. that I forwarded, it's this link. The link. So I forwarded to you. And you should just click on the link and then it will present you with, yeah, just tick what you want to work on. Okay. Thank you. You, sh you want to follow up with CICT so that they, they fix that thing, the password yeah, thing. I should Want follow up with them. Yes, I'm wondering how, I'll also try and follow up. I'm wondering why, how? I remember we wrote it down there, Why did I write it again? I thought I. We said at Mumbi. 
And then 2018? 24? Something else I would do, and, and this is the thing here. I, I was recording the screencast and I also shared it on YouTube. I wonder if I can find it. I'll try and see. Yes. <laughs> okay. See you when you see me. Enjoy. Thank you. Thanks.